Hey, hey. Ho, ho. It's the Shoot Brothers Podcast. Let's go! Because we are the Shoot Brothers. I am Michael Shoot Shepherd, joined as always by Cameron, Brother Osborne, Thunder Osborne, whatever he is. It's WrestleMania weekend. We're both here. Too big for one night, but we're packing it all into one show here. Uh, yeah, WrestleMania, baby. It's the season, tis the season to be jolly. Uh, too big for one night, of course. I would have wished, though, I mean, um, and this is minor, minor detail. They should have spelt the first, they should have spelt it T-W-O, like two big for one night i think you know uh, i think i think the word play <laughs> was right there uh I get you. I get you know you. i mean it, they were working against the clock but i think the word yeah. play was right there um but yeah the road's the road's over we're at the, the road end, we're at the end of the road this season is done yeah i mean um but the drive the journey continues we're going on some uncharted territory oh, some so- construction uh, i don't know Nope. Yeah. No. That, that's that's what it is. This was. Uh, of course, folks. We're talking. We're talking WrestleMania. We're talking this weird WrestleMania we have coming up. Of course, it was two parts. We got two parts of that trivia. Uh, Raw just happened too last night, which was kind of fun. Uh, before we kick off all of that stuff, though, um, let's jump to Twitter land. It's the tweet of the week. It's the tweet of the week. Uh, did you see, Mike, this, uh, this, the, oh, apparently this had the most WrestleMania social media interactions ever or something? Uh, yeah. They're always, like WWE is always setting records, whether, <laughs> whether yeah. or not people are there or not, apparently. Uh, something, I guess, just only people can talk about it on Twitter, so I guess it was that much bigger, maybe? And, yeah, there's nothing else going on. Like, yeah, normally this would be... Last weekend of the regular season for NHL and other shit, NBA be winding down and mm-hmm. all sorts of stuff going on. But yeah, this is the only game in town right now. Yeah, the boys of summer are in full swing. Yeah, uh, but that's yeah, not the case. They, but that's not the but that's but that's not the case. Apparently, anyways, uh, Twitter was popping uh, this weekend, and uh, so was our new Tweety League champion, brand new Tweety League champion, actually, uh, Oni Lorkin. Of, Oni Larkin. of huh? NXT UK or main, main roster NXT. Who knows where yeah. he is right now? Um, but he uh, he tweeted out everybody, all caps, by the way. He was very serious that we all knew this, telling us I had a WrestleMania party, uh, 15 party in 1999 and broke my collarbone when I speared my buddy into the wall. Don't try this at home. <laughs> How many kids right. are out there watching WrestleMania, watching oh, Jeff yeah. Hardy get speared off the top <laughs> and want to do it themselves? <laughs> Oni Lorkin, Oni Lorkin did. Apparently, yeah, uh, uh, suffered the suffered the consequence. That clavicle was. Uh, yeah, oh man, imagine that. And um, not sure what would have given him the inspiration in that WrestleMania 15. I looked around the card. Uh, some heavy hitters on there, though. That was a big card. It was a big card, but uh, I remember that the Mania itself was not that great. I mean, mm-hmm. it was still fine, but it wasn't uh, legendary like 17 was. <laughs> Just waited a couple more years. Yeah. Uh, but there you have it. Oni Lorcan, tweet of the Oni week. Oni Lorcan, yeah. Champion. A bit, of a, a bit of a surprise. But I know, nice I see. know. How did that one even come up on my uh, on my feed? I don't even know. I like it, though. Anyone's a contender. Anyone's a contender. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move right along here. Because uh, as we noted last time we spoke, there was still a SmackDown before WrestleMania. Okay, folks, it's Friday night. It's time for SmackDown Live. It, uh, it used to be on Tuesday, but then uh, I think it was on Friday before, though. No, no, wait. They used to film it on a Thursday and then release it. It's just SmackDown Live. There was all these rumors about matches changing and things of the sort, and uh, that happened for a few of them. So let's just get right into SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Um, so they do a Miz TV. Uh, the Usos are there. The New Day's there. Uh, Miz and Morrison are there. They all end up fighting, and somehow, I don't know, they didn't really, Miz didn't really get beat up that bad, but somehow they explained he's out of the match, so then they take the other two guys out of the match, so it's now just a triple threat ladder match, as we speculated. Uh, did we spe- did then- we speculate that? Uh, I think I, I had some. You dirt may have had a uh, uh, <laughs> little dirt. <laughs> now, has that ever happened before? I mean, it's a super uncommon match type um, and stip. I uh, know that there's at least been like 
one guy defending against like a team of two, like his partner's injured, so he takes them on by himself, things right, like that. Right, right, I don't know if we've ever had, but uh, but anyways, uh, the other big announcement that if you blinked, you might have missed it. But Roman Reigns is out of the match. They don't even say why. It's just Braun Strowman is now facing Goldberg for the Universal Title. Don't even say why. Um, Michael Cole's just like, hey, by the so, way. <laughs> so I guess yeah. In this case, it's easier to put Goldberg in a match quick with nothing to do about it rather than just take the match off altogether. Yeah. Right? I, I guess Goldberg, that's easier at that point. Yeah. I think no matter what, Goldberg's contract was done at Mania. So they're like, whatever. We don't want to pay him for nothing. Let's just that's get the point. title off. Uh, I don't know. They should have just aired that uh, the Roman Reigns Instagram video so people could at least see something's going on. Yeah, at least man. see. Yeah, because it felt uh, felt real shooty. But there was uh, nothing. Yeah, there was nothing. No, no explanation. Mm-hmm. But whatever. We'll get to that. Uh, yeah. Other than that, it was pretty much just yeah setting up the the Tucker or the yeah Ziggler Otis feud some more and uh, oh yeah the big angle there some more we got we got the <laughs> yeah, the angle unfolded. <laughs> what are you even talking <laughs> I'm about? Sorry. Well, thank you. Oh thank yeah, you we got a little, we got a little bit more uh, involvement. Of course, the truth will be heard. Yes. So this this so now I'm all, I thought this might be Killer Cross. Now this seems like this is a whole separate thing. This this clock truth seeker guy. I think it's the same guy. You think it's still Killer Cross? Uh, no, oh, oh no, I think it's the same guy that's been fucking with the production the past. Oh yeah, no, it I has think that. To be. Before I thought it was, but you thought it was that yeah that one guy. Yeah, I'm I'm still on. I think earlier on I pitched Mustafa Ali for some reason. No, Uh, I can see. I'm still I'm still I think kind of on the train, kind of on the train. But the truth will be heard, especially the truth when it comes to what happened on Valentine's Day, uh, twenty uh, twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. So. so in the middle of all this shenanigans, Ziggler was supposed to fight Tucker. Everyone's doing all this shit. And then the glitch pops up. And then uh, we cut to this hooded figure just sitting in this room with all these computers and monitors. And <laughs> and, and the Matrix-like the uh, matri- yeah. coding going <laughs> vertically down the screen, which you've never seen before. Yeah. So this guy, <laughs> he just turns around. We don't see his face, but he speaks in this masked voice. And uh, he just says, the truth will be heard. And then we get this footage backstage, voyeur. Of uh, <laughs> Mandy, Mandy's on the phone, or she's talking to Sonia. It's Valentine's Day, and she's getting ready for her date with Otis. Mandy leaves, but her phone's still there on the table. So Sonia p- picks it up, texts Otis. So that bitch was behind it all along. Um, and then we cut to Otis, you know, getting the text and all that. Sonia deletes the text. So and then back in real time, Mandy is Mandy's staring at the screen, wide open mouth. Sonia's like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> um, and then there's more footage. We get Sonya plotting together with Ziggler for him to get Mandy. So after all this, Mandy walks off devastated. Sonya runs after her. Uh, Ziggler runs off. Otis chases him. And yeah, how this could, true seeker character. I like him. He's how could a, how could Sonya do that to her best f- friend? She was she wanted her to herself. No, as we uh, you know. Uh, didn't this happen recently or not re- recently enough where there was a legitimate women's tag option that just got disbanded due to a feud? Uh, probably. Fuck, yeah. I remember it happened. I can't remember who the who the duo was. It may have been one of those, like, you know, it was hod- hodgepodge together. The next thing we know, they hated each other. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, they've done that with yeah. a couple. But, um... Uh... Yeah, so this this truth seeker, I like. It. Give me more secret footage. Yeah, and and this is big, and this is big because you know, we we are building towards our Mandy on a pole match. Yeah, and then of course, yeah, after the break, Sonya's crying, following Mandy, saying, "No, but Mandy won't listen." So. No. Uh, yeah, and then I guess the last big thing was the the John Cena go home promo where he's. He's all serious, John. You know, it's, it's, it's unprecedented WrestleMania and the Firefly Funhouse match. He doesn't know what it is, but he's going to finish what he started six years ago, expose the fiend. He accepts the challenge, and then the puppets, Ramblin' Rabbit, starts popping up. Huskus is there. They're all there. They're all taunting Cena until he's here. And then the lights shut down. They come back on. The fiend is up on the balcony there. That staring little at bal- Cena. that little balcony has come into play. Uh, comes into like play more episode. often than you think. I think every episode of this sh- show. That's yeah. what we're calling it now. It's the just perch. every episode of this show. Someone's falling off the balcony. 
getting beat yeah. up on the balcony. Uh, I can't wait for someone to jump like, you know, off the rope onto the balcony because that's also <laughs> a, it's not too far. Kofi I think someone, you know, yeah, Kofi or Ricochet, maybe he can yeah, flip off the things. balcony and still land in the ring. Uh, <laughs> that balcony, I haven't seen the end of it. Have not yeah. seen Well, this the was the time they could have easily, since it was edited, they could have got some wires in and green screen and <laughs> the crouching that. tiger just like, Whoa! Imagine just... that. It's just Bray Wyatt flipping through the air like it's a John Maybe that's movie. Maybe next year's, next year's uh, edited movie type match. They can have a, like a big kung fu. Right, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so at the end, the fiend is just staring at Cena. You think that's how it's going to end? And then all of a sudden, regular Bray just pops up behind him says let me in and then the lights shut off and he's gone and just a quick a jump scare in wrestling you don't see very often not at all good. not good at all well, i mean yeah because they yeah we could edit this and it was uh it was pretty cool yeah, it, looked, it was pretty cool it was cool it was cool yeah it was a great way to a great way to close off smackdown to leading into mania one hell of a promo i uh yeah these, on, uh, on, this... on john cena's side uh it was huge yeah, yeah, no, they've, uh, they've they've nailed it. They've nailed it. The promo game. Mm-hmm. They've benefited, I think, from the empty arena, just having that that serious tone. Who uh, about... like Cena Bray Wyatt? Yeah, that feud has. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, but let's yeah, get you can on kinda, here. You run run your lines without that arena crowd influence of controlling your cadence. Yeah, you know it's that yes. kind of thing, right? You can present your monologue the way that. You're presenting it and not kind of, especially, you know, J- John Cena doesn't have to yeah. wait in between you sucks. There's a what? <laughs> and yeah, what? What's? <laughs> and those motherfuckers yeah. out there in the crowd. Send some, yeah, they have to start rushing. They can't <laughs> yeah, pause ruining, like, and then this and this. Da, 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 ruining da. all the good promos. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but let's get on here. We got a lot to get to. We've got like 20 matches or so. Because it's WrestleMania. <laughs> WrestleMania 36 Pirate Ship Edition. Uh, (laughs) WrestleMania Pirate Ship. I like that. Yeah, but uh, we didn't get the full glory of it because they're they're confined to the 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 performance center as as Mm -hmm. they've been the past few while. But uh, the pre-show. I'm sure you probably didn't watch it. No. Mm -mm. Night one. Too big for one (laughs) pre-show. I, but I think thankfully, I, I tuned in and where it was just kind of like Corey Graves in front of a green screen, and I was just, yeah. I, then I so, just kind of tuned out. I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So they're in the green screen room, him and uh, Rosenberg. So they were doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the only important part was the match: Cesaro versus Drew Gulak, which was actually pretty good, but very short, only a couple minutes. But um, yeah, the best part of it all. I don't know if you've seen Cesaro ever do his his UFO spin move. Yes, of course. Yes, but he's never done it in WWE. Oh, so really? I've been waiting. Yeah, I've been waiting like, uh, like I don't know, 10 years. It's the one where he does like an airplane spin. He's on your shoulders. He's spinning around fast, but then he drops his hands down to his waist like a Superman pose. And he's literally spinning you on his head and neck. And he does like a full spin and then falls to the ground. And he got the win with that move. A move that I've been waiting for him to see for years. And yeah, Cesaro wins. Drew Gulak, who I thought would win, didn't get it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, that's cool. No, I have seen that. I have se- I mean, come to think about it, I guess I have never seen it in a WWE ring. That's true. Yeah, but it's very impressive just the way he's literally just hands down spinning you right on yeah, his head. Yeah, how's he doing that? <laughs> Is he holding you know, your... He's a an- strong he's, man. He's holding your ankles with his traps, like, between his neck. <laughs> he's like, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so on to the main show here. We start with Stephanie McMahon, of course. She has to be there. She gives her little speech. Uh, but then what I really liked after this was this beautiful video collection. They always start WrestleMania with America the Beautiful. And they had all these traditional. The edit, like, all uh, edited together. Yeah, Aretha Franklin, Ray Charles, Little Richard, John Legend, Boys to Men, all these guys. So they spliced it all together. This actually made me, I don't know, I like this a lot. Yeah. No, it, it made it me was, feel good. Uh, it made me feel emotional. I was happy. I was like, this is great. You know, there was crowd noise for the songs. It had a WrestleMania feel. So I'm like, this is good. Was uh was there supposed to be somebody who was supposed to sing it this year? I guess or I'm sure there was. We maybe didn't they know, ne- maybe they never got that far or something. Yeah. Maybe it was gonna be the weekend because he had the the theme for this year's WrestleMania, uh, whatever that song's called. It's a banger, banger of a track. What pirates? No, <laughs> you know the song. Is the song okay. called Pirates? <laughs> no, but uh, yes, it was the pirate theme. So then they show this uh, 
after that, they had this like video, all the wrestlers dressed as pirates, pillaging, doing pirate stuff. And then there was like this Jack Sparrow narrator arguing with the movie theater narrator. It was really weird. It was, a weird it was really weird. No, I think, I think, yeah, definitely way longer of a video. Do you think this was too. always planned or you think they just made this weird? I think they, ma- I think they made it weird because let's, let's lean into it. Yeah. You know? So yeah, there was just, yeah, it was, it was a little long. It was a little long, but uh, well, I enjoyed whatever. it. I was, fu- I was funny. It was yeah, funny. It was fine. It was fine. You know, we got to see all these people doing weird shit. Uh, and then of course they, they had some ACDC for those about to rock. <laughs> And that leads us in. Yeah, what's we're, up? At the we're at two ACDC songs now. Vince uh, loves ACDC. Vince loves ACDC, apparently. Yeah, to him, it's like, yeah. He, I never thought of that. You Rock and roll has not progressed since the 80s. Yeah, <laughs> it's good shit. It's good yeah. shit. Yeah. So uh, we're here, though. We're at the Performance Center. Rob Gronkowski's here to host the show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's got his, his get up on. Um, we're kicking off with some women's <laughs> action. God is get up on. <laughs> That's sure right. Just, yeah. You're sure right. The the Kabuki Warriors are here to defend those women's tag titles against Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Uh, good match. Good action. I'm liking the chemistry between Bliss and Asuka they're going on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're on separate brands, so not going to happen. <laughs> not- uh, and Nikki Cross, she was great here as well. Michael Cole kept saying it was her best match in WWE. Uh there was one, uh, did you notice there seemed to be one spot that was clearly edited, kind of like cut at one point? I Where did like Nick- see that. Was it something going on like slightly outside of the ring? Uh, well, I think like Nikki hit her neck breaker. She was going for the pin and then Kyrie saying like pops in the screen with That's an elbow drop. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. The elbow <laughs> yeah. dropper. And you could like, just kind of feel She didn't climb up the- and just kind of like whoop. Yeah, or you could kind of feel the rhythm of the one, two, three was just also Yeah. Something was a little off. bit. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, the wrestling was still fine. Um, eventually, Nikki hits another neck breaker on Kyrie. Bliss climbs up, hits a twisted Bliss, landing mostly on Sane's legs, but she still gets the three count to win the titles. So uh, good for Bliss Cross. They're happy. Big old title Nikki change win. right off the bat, too. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, they've been pushing Asuka a lot lately. So I think this could be the end of the Kabuki Warriors here. It could be. You know, they have uh, the longest reign on that belt, though. That's what, uh, yeah, they did set the record, I and know. uh, you know, poor, poor Kyrie saying this was supposed to be her WrestleMania, the big pirate theme. Yeah, um, yeah, why didn't they uh do something with that? There was all yeah, this, yeah, yeah, we you know, treasure yeah, we props about, or something. Okay. Yeah, they didn't do a whole lot different for the inside of the, the, the performance center. For the all they really did was just move the sign there and put it beside the huge WrestleMania sign. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I mean, they already, play Vince like? already bought the sign, so he's like, yeah. "Fuck, what do I do? What do I do with it?" Uh, yeah, that's why it looks. That's why it looks like comically large back there, because <laughs> it's the real <laughs> yeah. sign that's supposed to be hanging. Somewhere. Oh yeah, it was huge. It was it. It was uh, huge. That'll, that'll come into play a bit later. But there's your first title change. Let's go on to the match that no one really was looking forward to. King Corbin is taking on Elias here. But of course, you know that deadly fall that Elias had a few days ago. Corbin's like, you know, he can, he's not coming out. Just forfeit right now. But Elias does come down. He's got his guitar. He smashes Corbin, and then we can start the match. Uh, and basically, yeah, just uh, Corbin's trying to cheat, putting his foot on the ropes. The lady ref says, "What are you doing, Corbin?" He yells back. Elias rolls him up, gets the win. Three count. Boom. There you go. Sure. Didn't need any more. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. All I needed. You know, I think no performance kind of... this year. No crowds. There's no real point in singing. So no, nope. that's a good point. I never thought about that. I was hoping he would sing, but uh, without that WWE stands for bit, uh, yeah. it would kind of not make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> but let's go on here because uh, Becky Lynch is defending her Raw Women's Title against Shayna Baszler. I was a little surprised that the placement on the card pretty early, but pretty. You know, or what is this match three now? Match three of the main show. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. So, and both uh, uh, both women's matches there too. Yeah, weird. Hmm. They start it. Yeah, um, Becky comes in her big truck again. Of course, <laughs> they got to get all the use out of that. Becky big truck. Becky big truck. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this match I liked it. It was it was still it was shorter than I thought. It was but, shorter uh, than I thought. Yeah, they go at it right away. They're just swinging. You can hear those punches connecting in the the empty arena there, and. Uh, yeah, they're going back and forth, both trying to lock in their submissions. Shayna slams Becky into the announce table a few times. Becky hits that rock bottom on the side of the ring. Looks good. Um, but eventually, Shayna does lock in that career food clutch in the middle of the ring. Becky's in trouble. They go down on the mat, but Becky rolls over while Shayna's still locked in with her shoulders down, and Becky pins her to retain the title. 
So I say, fuck yeah, Becky's still here. <laughs> no reign of terror for Shayna yet. This is, what, yeah, yeah this, a, th- this is a weird one. Uh, it was surprising, yeah. Su- Eight minutes and 30 seconds clean. Uh, wins clean, uh, especially after Shayna just kind of ripped apart the whole Raw women's the division. The whole roster, yeah. Uh, and then Becky kind of hands Shayna not like a really decisive win, almost in that same way that she didn't really decisively beat Ronda. Yeah. Although she yeah. did, although she beat Ronda Rousey in the main event of WrestleMania. She beat them both, but, but yeah, you know, there no, was uh, that quick little, uh, what's it called? What was what was the Ronda pin called? Kind of like you, you know, kind of cross, just kind of like a little cross over her body or something. Yeah. Yeah, um, but um, and this one too, a little roll up high on the shoulders, gets the three. Uh, I yeah, like it. Leaves. Uh, I like it. It's like it she's leaves. won, but she hasn't really. She hasn't really won decisively. Yeah. No. Much like uh, the Ronda Rousey, it leaves the rematch on the table. Yeah. Like everyone the still wants to see Ronda versus Becky on the one table. Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people that are gonna be gunning for Becky. You know. So. Yeah. But it's good. She's still the champ. She's still over. We still love the man. So I'm fine with this. I'm happy. And I heard the other day that she's like the fourth highest paid. Uh, superstar. Yeah, she's in. Yeah, she's uh, she's making like more than uh, her fiance Seth Rollins, I think, <laughs> or uh, at least close to it. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess probably yeah. who's getting she's paid? Making more? six figures, that's for sure. Yeah. She's making mills. Well, I mean, yeah, mills it's kind of like bills. Brock is probably getting paid more. Yeah, Brock Roman. Uh, Seth, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe Seth. Maybe Seth. <laughs> But uh, either but way, yeah, good crazy. for her. Yeah, it's great for yeah, her. Good for the man. The highest paid woman probably ever in the uh, yeah. in the company. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Maybe other than Stephanie. But. Well, and I'm sure that uh, <laughs> I'm sure Charlotte gets some money on the back end too, you know, so it's like it's not on her tax uh you know, she she's she's getting something on the back end for sure. Don't Yeah, uh, you're a flare. Um, you're a you're a flare. You're making some fucking cash. Yeah. But let's go on here. We got Sami Zayn defending his intercontinental title against Daniel Bryan and everyone's got their coaches at ringside trying to take each other out uh, and Sammy spends the beginning of the match just running around trying to avoid Bryan trying to and so Bryan's like all right take the count out so Sammy goes to leave but Bryan chases him down gets him back in uh and Bryan's all over him he's slapping Sammy in the face Sammy's crying a lot in the match he's just yeah healing it up uh we didn't quite get the wrestling performance that you and I had hoped for I think uh you know, but uh, it was still fun. Um, mm-hmm. Eventually, Brian uh, he suicides, dives to take out Nakamura Cesaro, goes back in the ring, jumps off the top rope, but then Sammy catches a midair with a haluva kick, gets the three count. I actually thought this was a uh, like a best case scenario kind of for this match. Uh, Brian, you know, Daniel Bryan looked fierce, you know, wanting to win that title. Sami Zayn retained, which is kind of what I wanted anyways. And yeah, all the cronies helpers uh, played their part in a fun way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, this was fun. Uh, it was great to hear. Uh, it was great to hear. Yeah, these what five of them? These five chirping away at each other was one of the better yeah, versions. One the... of the better versions of, uh, of course, we heard throughout all the matches. We heard you know a lot of people talking to each other. This was one of the better ones. Uh, yeah, having uh, like four guys at ringside helps add some atmosphere to the match. Of course, yeah, it was a uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yes, but uh, this next match was pretty fun as well. We got the triple threat SmackDown tag team title match: John Morrison defending against Jimmy Uso, <laughs> defending against Kofi Kingston. Did you know it was Jimmy Uso? Uh, no, I could have, I could, like, you know, we could have played whatever, whatever that game is, who, who's the wrestler, and uh, <laughs> whatever you're going to call it. Yeah, well, uh, well, he's the standout, he's mm-hmm. the better Uso, so that's why he's in this Is match he the here. better Uso? Uh, he's the, yeah, I mean, they're both pretty good, but Jimmy's so, like, a little Yeah, bit like, better. like, if, you know, his, if Jimmy, if Jay Uso's rating is, like, an 85, Jimmy Uso's yeah. is like a, an 87? Is he kind of like a little yeah. bit better? Or? Yeah, yeah, he should be. He should be. Okay. He could have a single. He could be He could be a singles champion someday. Inter- and, and and is he the one married to Naomi? <laughs> Which one's that? Yeah. Okay. yeah, so he's got that going. He's got a built-in manager already. Perfect. So he's got more going for him. Uh, but anyways, no, this, was, uh, this ended up being a pretty solid ladder match. These guys worked hard. You know, Morrison's super athletic, so he's just doing 
Uh, yeah, at one point, he does a one-footed corkscrew swanton bomb off the turnbuckle onto Jimmy on the ladder. Is that what that's um, called? I didn't know what to call that. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> sometimes oh, that's I just like name the, things. the John Morrison move. <laughs> He's always doing that little one-foot. <laughs> yeah. I could only spin name it around. by like the. I put the pieces together of like the two moves. Oh right, so step it. one, it's one foot, <laughs> yeah. and then one it's, foot, a cor- corkscrew, it's a corkscrew swanton. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of swantons onto it. Those looks yeah. looks so cool though. Yeah, like when he does those off of the oh, uh, awesome. the steel parkour. steps too, when he fucking like lands it. Yeah, you can do like a too. triple flip off of like a six inch cap. Oh, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then there was another spot where uh, Jimmy is climbing the ladder and he's pushed off the top ladder, off the top of the ladder, over the top rope, directly to the floor. But the camera angle used was clearly edited because we don't see the fall. We don't see uh, the fall. <laughs> we don't see the fall. <laughs> I mean, it would have been a tough. You know, when uh, Montez Ford had that bump, they showed the fall, so. Yeah, no, but uh, judging by that height, he would have, like, bounced up. But it was up. fine, yeah. We don't want him to die, <laughs> you know. It was for the cinematic uh, aspect of this match. There's also fine. a great point in one of uh, Jimmy Uso is about to throw somebody into, like, a horizontal ladder that he says that he set up. And he says something like, uh, I'm going to make your face a pancake, boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was good at talking. Oh, trash. it's fine. That was this was another good talking yeah. one. <laughs> and he was talking to Kofi. Yeah, when he was talking to Kofi, he's like, "Hey, you good? But you ain't that good." Yes, yeah, like, shit like that. Brother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Kofi had some fun spots. Mm-hmm. He like springboards off the rope onto the Morrison on the ladder. Hurricane Rana. Uh, Morrison does a little Ray Phoenix and tight rope walks along the top rope over to Kofi. Then mm-hmm. Spanish flies him. Uh, that was a good spot. That was a big spot. That was good. I also noticed that uh, the color by number pants that Kofi's been wearing since the chamber have slowly been getting colored in. It started out blank, and now I notice now it's all it's still some spots have been colored in. Oh, really? I haven't. Uh, I haven't noticed. I haven't noticed. Uh, I haven't noticed that. Interesting. Yeah. But eventually, uh, the finish comes down. All three men are climbing up the ladders. They're battling at the top. Everyone's hanging on to the titles. They unclip the the hanger. But the titles are still there. They're holding on. And then Uso and Kofi, they punch Morrison. He falls off while clinging onto the belt. So they come down with him. He falls onto a ladder. But he wins the match. And then Uso and Kofi are just hanging onto that gold clip on top. Like, come on, man. Damn. They're just, like, bummed out. That was a fantastic finish. Yeah, I loved it. Great match. Great. great finish. That was, uh, yeah. That the was way he sort of, fe- of fell off the ladder and grabbed and grabbed the belts with him. That was great. Yeah, yeah. he landed, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so also, and any time we can make, like, the faces of a match just look so incredibly stupid, I'm, I'm behind <laughs> yeah. that all the time. Like, the look on Kofi and Jimmy Uso's face when they're just like, yeah. huh? And now you can hear them after two, be like, "Oh man!" Yeah, they're like, "Oh god, god damn it, <laughs> damn man, that's yeah, you so me? close, so close." <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that was fun. That was great. They busted their asses, those men. Fanta- uh, fantastic ladder match. Not the ladder match yeah. we thought we were gonna get, but uh, I'm glad we got it. Yeah, good all around. Uh, but let's keep going here because these guys they weren't fooling around either. Kevin Owens taking on the Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins. And Rollins, he comes out, he's all in white. He's got like his little robe and he's he's just smiling like he really is the Messiah. I love it. Hair up and a man bun. <laughs> yeah, the man bun. Uh, yeah, good match here. Early on, Rollins hits a falcon arrow on the side of the ring. They go back and forth for a while. They're outside the ring fighting. And then Seth grabs the ring bell and just clocks Owen in the head, causing a DQ. But Seth, he's happy with that. He's ready to leave. And then Owen gets on the mic and says, no way, get back here. No DQ, no rules. Let's finish this, bitch. So Rollins comes down. We we get another match. So does this count as two matches? We're up to whatever. I don't know. <laughs> we're actually up to 20 matches instead of 19. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but we're going. No DQ. We're back in here. Rollins hits him with some chair shots. Owens is still talking trash while getting his ass beat. So that was great, too. <laughs> uh, and then Owens grabs the ring bell and clocks Seth with it a couple times. So he lays him out on the announce table. And then this is where the WrestleMania sign comes into play. As Owens just scales up the equipment, gets on top of that sword flag sign, WrestleMania. <laughs> Pirate sign. And he, yeah. And then he takes a few steps and jumps, hits a massive elbow drop onto Rollins, off that fucking thing, through the announce table, kills everyone. Um, and then Seth Rollins, the way he was selling this thing. It was like the the grape stomping lady who falls. You remember that viral video? <laughs> <laughs> he must have. <laughs> Did you get? Because <laughs> he Rollins, yeah. 
Wait, Rollins must have been winded for real. He must have like, been. Well, hey, this, is, this, this, has to, <laughs> this has to be the first time someone's jumped off the WrestleMania sign. Oh, definitely. Because Before it, you die. <laughs> it's usually up in the, up in the 300 level. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I mean, take, taking a bump off the WrestleMania sign, that's, yes. uh, that's going to... That, that's a that, highlight. That's going to That will live you. on forever. <laughs> truly, yeah. No matter what. It truly yeah, will. No matter what people think of this WrestleMania, that clip, they can always replay that clip. Oh, it truly will, It'll yeah. always be there. Big drop. Big drop. It, it can be, you know, that intro the, the, that they play before every show with the high hopes trumpet. Oh, yeah. Edited into that clip. Smash. <laughs> yeah, this bump will be in that clip one year. But uh, yeah, so he kills him. He hits that thing. Rollins is the grape stomping lady. Uh, <laughs> he, he gets it back in the ring. <laughs> Even when he gets back in the ring, he's still doing it. He's like, <laughs> he's, so, <laughs> so Owens has some mercy. He hits a stunner, gets the pin. Great ending. Great match. Back to back. Two big hot matches. Uh, yeah, oh shit! Right, it was right after that. Well paced and everything. I mean, I think yeah, right after that ladder match. If you were if you were tuning into the pre show, you knew what matches were coming up. I think because they did. Yeah. They they did yeah, say they did announce night one. They did announce night one as they went on. I kind of had it on the background, so we we, yeah. we knew we knew what we were gonna get. Uh, this was fun. We didn't know and the it, main event for sure. And it's probably yeah, not over, right? Uh, this KO Seth thing. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe uh, not. They need- yeah, I don't know what else. Where's uh, Buddy Murphy? Another good trash talking <laughs> match. Also, uh, Kevin Owens is just yeah, just, he's one of the best at that. Always have him match. mic'd up. <laughs> yeah. Just no matter what, he should just always be mic'd up, ready to go. Uh, that'd be that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, and then uh, after the match, Gronk's there and his buddy Mojo. They're talking about what's going on WrestleMania when our truth comes sneaking in with his twenty four seven title. So of course they lay him out. Gronk goes for the pin, but Mojo says, no, you don't, tosses him off. And then Mojo pins Truth. He wins a title. He's celebrating. He's in Gronk face, and he goes, yeah, the champ. Come and get it. I ain't running, playboy. And he runs off. Um, I now, I, I think this was a big... Uh, the the These people were not social distancing, if I can recall. Um, <laughs> there was a huge little crowd of them. Well, that was the next night. Oh, that's the next part night. Okay, two. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That was part two. We'll get that to was that. part yeah, two. Yeah, this is part one. Part one ends. Mojo's the champ. And Gronk is just kind of like, huh? And then Mojo uh, <laughs> Playboy. And then he leaves. So it was funny. That was that's funny. your Mojo Rally impression? Uh, that's what he said. Playboy. He said it like that. <laughs> I mean, uh, he doesn't sound like that. But right, really right. Good. He sounds like him saying it like that. Yeah. Right. He doesn't have right. a good voice for an impression. It's tough. It is you tough. Know? I mean, but anyways, <laughs> let's go here. We got a universal championship match. Goldberg taking on Roman Reigns, right? Uh, no, if what? you hadn't, yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't blame I, you. Though, I, I, you... I, I went to go take a piss because I thought it was yeah, a commercial exactly. break. Uh, and that's yesterday. literally it. Uh, shit. Yeah. Okay, well there you go. Thanks, Michael. Well, then Cole. you've had the piss taken out of you because you are not getting Roman Reigns. You're getting Goldberg defending against Braun Strowman, the the Beast. To get the the wash these hands. Wash these said. hands. Of course, that was uh, I think yeah. that was a tweet of the week or something one time. Oh, by the way, was... I meant to bring this up earlier on. Is JBL the most qualified uh, we have? Like out of our <laughs> oh, backup. Yeah, we didn't even mention it. Stop. So we're we almost didn't even done night that. one, we, and we, we didn't we mention all... JBL. I was no, and I thought about this right away because <laughs> I think that about proves the point though. Is that uh, yeah? We don't really <clears throat> Imme- Imme- care much for him. Immediately, it was just like somewhere in that woman's uh, in the fir- in the woman's match, the Bliss Cross Kabuki Warriors. It just like JBL said one thing. I don't remember what it was. He just said something, and then that thought always comes by my head. Like, is he the one who needs to be? <laughs> <laughs> is he really the most qualified to be doing this right now? There's no. Where's Beth Phoenix? Can we at least well, you know? Uh, can we had- can we sub her in every so? Well? I don't. I don't know. I just. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, even what's his name? Uh, that Pat McAfee, he did good that one night when he subbed in. That was fantastic. Yeah, even that was yeah. fun. Or uh, even Samoa Joe. His, who's normally his doing? Because uh, SmackDown is Corey Graves and Michael Cole, right? Yeah, so they would switch like during the SmackDown matches. I think Byron Saxton was there as well. He called some matches. Yeah, he called some matches. Uh, yeah, I was just like, huh. I thought we had a deeper yeah. bench than this, uh, but but I guess not. <laughs> JBL and on these, commentary. These trying times. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Goldberg Strowman Universal Title. Uh, let's get to it. 
Goldberg just comes out of the gate. He's hitting spear, spear, three spears. Strowman's kicking out. Goldberg hits his fourth spear. And then he goes to set up for the jackhammer. But Braun picks him up, hits a power slam. Then he picks him up again. He hits three more power slams in a row. And then he gets the pin to become new Universal Champion in like three and a half minutes or so. Um, new Universal Champion about he did it in two and a half minutes, and it was two and, a, a half. and it was about two and a half years too late. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, so, so 2017, really funny. the iron was hot. I was watching this WrestleMania with uh, someone who doesn't watch wrestling. And, uh, of course, I was like, this is going to be really weird because there's no crowd. But, like, I, I, I liked, I, pr- I was, pre- this whole time, by the way, tonight, the next night, I was, pre- I was trying to cheer when people would cheer. I found it easier, I don't know, Mike, did, I found it easier <laughs> to watch this on low volume. So, um, I, so I didn't hear anything as much. Yeah, I know uh, some people, or at least I saw one person on, I was kind of following along on Reddit, so there was some in- crowd interaction. Uh, one guy was like posting, he's like, hey, put this on in the background. And it was just like three hours of crowd noise in the See, background. <laughs> that's actually funny. I was like, imagine, yeah. put on. I tried like, it for a couple minutes. It actually felt all right. Or yeah, like, nah, take, the... take background crowd noise. And then when you when a big spot happens, turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, yeah, uh, we got we got that uh, more John Morrison uh, tight roping into the Spanish fly. Crank it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crank it. And then have a boo. But, be sure uh, to have a boo on like another track also <laughs> ready to go. So if it's. uh, Yeah. If it's that, but but, uh, but, no. but what I but what I was saying, I watched this with someone, and so that's a super weird. And just before this match, they asked me, "Does it ever happen when somebody comes out and just loses right away?" Yeah, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's called a squash. It usually <laughs> happens in like less than a minute, but there's some people that come out and just do their two moves, and then it's done." <laughs> and it was just, uh, it was great that I got to like almost explain the match before I saw it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Each guy hit the same move four times, uh, but Strowman wins. It was short, but it was sweet. I liked it. Um, and Braun, you know, like we said, it's uh, about two and a half years too late, but I'm still happy for him. It all comes uh, full circle, Mike. You know, Goldberg does the job yeah. just like Bray Goldberg Wyatt. Matches, just like still... Bray Wyatt did the job for him. It all yeah. comes full circle. I guess if the belt had to not be, it had to be on Roman, right? I mean, that's what they're working towards, but so I it guess not it's like just now. take it, just put it on somebody else instead, because anything is better than Goldberg. I don't really know. Yeah, they're like, well, Goldberg's not full time. So I'm just not a big bra- I'm just not a big Braun guy. I'm not that like the now, best option would have yeah. uh, just been the Fiend still having it, and he could have defended the against Cena, which was a lot of fun, right? Yeah, hmm. but. Uh, but no, uh, whatever. I'm happy for Braun. Of but, course, yes, of course. Uh, well, I mean, he's what? He's he's <laughs> he's won his only two titles in the last six months, so I guess he is on a career trajectory up, right? Yeah, but there was no, uh, I think you called Nicholas appearing. I, I did say, I was like, the only way he's winning is if yeah. Nicholas is there. Yeah, you're, um, you're a shoot meter. You thought Roman was still in this thing last time we spoke, I think. Uh, yeah, no, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I thought, uh, I thought that video was a work... <laughs> yeah, but they didn't even acknowledge it. Um, and they didn't it, even so. acknowledge it, which is a bummer, which means Roman's probably real life pissed. That's what that means, I think, is that it wasn't a work, it was a shoot, no, and, I think, uh, yeah, and he's, he's pissed. Uh, but who knows? Who knows when we'll see him next? But that doesn't matter because this Universal title match wasn't the main event. Becky wasn't the main event. That means we're getting a Boneyard match as the main event. AJ Styles is main eventing WrestleMania. Only took him, I mean, he's probably like 45. It only took him 45 years to do it. Yeah. I uh, could not but, be more uh, excited for for that and for this. Yes. For all this, we don't know what's going to happen. We're all excited. Um, and it, I think it exceeded all expectations. And yeah, it was worthy of main eventing night one. It was, let's, let's just get right into this. It was like a film. Just opens with... You know, these establishing shots of the spooky, smoky graveyard and <laughs> spooky. takers. The big dong hits. We hear the big dong and a hearse pulls up to the scene. The druids get out of the car. They open up the back. They pull out a casket and then they open it up and reveal AJ Styles, who sits up. And this was perfect. They don't want none. They don't I want none. It. He's laughing. He's mocking. Yes. I did see a great tweet by Evil Uno, who uh, tweeted a photo of those druids. 
and said, that wasn't us. <laughs> Just want everyone to know, this is not the Dark Order. Uh, yeah. This is something else, just so we know. Maybe ring wraiths? And uh, how does AJ Styles have access to ring wraiths? That's what I want to know. Uh, or dementor-looking things. Uh, <laughs> Either way, I loved it. It was brilliant. Brilliant opening. Uh, AJ says, come on, big man, I'm ready. And then we hear the hum of a motorcycle in the distance. And then Now That We're Dead by Metallica starts playing a 2017 track by them. And Oh, yeah, so, just so see... Vince McMahon's aware of new music, just only if it's by bands that uh, were also oh, I'm sure Triple H, in the 80s? I'm sure Triple H had to tell him. That's, that's a good point. Or he probably knows Metallica, but he doesn't know this. I don't know. What yeah. <laughs> but we see this is not just The Undertaker. This is the American badass Undertaker. He's ripping down the road on his chopper. On he his pulls hog. pulls up to the graveyard. His hog. His hog. He just pulls up. Everything about this is amazing. So it's shot like a movie. Like when he gets off, like his little... The name goes beside him like The Undertaker, and he's just fucking. Mm-hmm. Uh, so AJ's there. He's talking trash. He's like, I dug a grave for you, Taker. And Taker's like, you dug your own grave, son. And everything. The tra- <laughs> this was just. I want to see, I you, I see you doing a wor- like a word for word adaptation of this, playing both characters. <laughs> a, sta- a one man stage play. <laughs> yeah, one man stage production of the I WrestleMania bet. 36 Boneyard match starring Mike Shepard as both The Undertaker. And AJ Styles. Well, we get, <laughs> we'll get a small version of that. Uh, so they're there. The, the grave's open. AJ picks up a brick, tries to take a swing, but Taker knocks him down. And I guess this is when the match begins. So uh, yeah, when did the, when did the official match begin? <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, but we're I in, counted, but, but I it started here. once the first punch connects. The bell rings. That's that's the, the bell ring, and gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and then they're fighting. They're beside the hearse. Taker picks up this small pipe and tries to bash AJ's face in. He ducks. Taker smashes his arm through the window, cuts him open. He's just like, son of a bitch. Look what you did. You got me cut open. And yeah, that was fine. Apparently the cut was real. Sources say. Shoot cut. Shoot cut. <laughs> shoot cut. That shoot. Was that was some shoot blood. <laughs> yeah. wow. So they're fighting on the hearse. He throws him, breaks the windshield. They're talking smack this whole time. He's just like, hey, you want some? You want this old man, huh? Where are you going, AJ? AJ? He's just fucking... <laughs> Uh, but AJ's using dirty tactics, literally, like slinging some dirt in Undertaker's eyes. Kicks him in the balls. They're slugging it out. Uh, but then Taker ends up knocking AJ into the grave. So he's in trouble. And then, hey, dead man, we're just getting started. Gallows and Anderson have arrived. His guitar licks like, bow, 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 bow. like fucking, the music, the soundtrack the is perfect. Distance. Yeah, someone just yeah, went, like a Whoa. dirty Western. Uh, <laughs> So everything, the camera angles, everything was perfect. He walks over, Taker walks over to them like a lone cowboy. And then the barn behind them just lights up. And then a gang of druids start pouring out. They surround Taker. But he's like an action hero. He's like, you won't do this? Let's do it. And he's just fucking boom, boom. One by one. Takes, takes them, them out. all like out. <laughs> but then Gallows and Anderson jump in, start pounding on him. Uh, and then they pick up a shovel to hit him. And, but the head of the thing, the shovel just breaks off right away. It was kind of weird. But uh, they got the wooden part of the shovel. They go to, but Taker gets a hold of it, starts beating them up. But then AJ comes out of nowhere, smashes a tombstone over his head, a gravestone, if you will. <laughs> if if one would. Yeah. So he's fucking maybe concussed, maybe dead. So uh, AJ's just talking more smack. You ain't got what it takes to bury me, old man. Just pounding on his head. Uh, he's beating, punching him, and then he winces. Said, "God damn it! You made me break my finger." Who knows? That might have been a shoot, shoot break. Shoot break. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, AJ tackles him through a, the wall of the barn and Taker's just on, on the ground. He's wheezing like an old man at this point. He's good at that. Uh, well, <laughs> I think those were real yeah. wheezes. <laughs> it was. And then, well, oh, man, AJ's just like, you don't have it anymore, old man. And then this cello just starts playing like sad music as Taker's on the ground. <gasps> <laughs> you ain't got it, old man. Fucking dude. My God. <laughs> like, oh yeah. my God, this is it. This is perfect. And Taker just gives him the finger and he's like, okay, American badass, broken down bitch. And he, AJ gets a fresh shovel, breaks it over the Undertaker who falls into the grave. And then AJ gets on the little tractor that's there and he, he's prepared to release the dirt when these bright lights shine up behind him and the Undertaker appears. So the American badass died in that grave. The Undertaker's back here, I guess. He teleports, starts pounding on AJ. Um, So AJ flees. He climbs up this ladder to the roof of the barn, and Taker goes up after him. And then uh, AJ's back and awake. Taker's like, nowhere to run. He raises his arms. Flames pop up. 
he's magic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he is magic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Gallows and Anderson try to jump him. He just throws Gallows right off the roof. And then tombstones Anderson onto the roof. And now just you and me, AJ. He grabs him by the throat, choke slams him off the roof, through the f- wooden floor below, just breaking that shit. Good fall. Uh, and then Taker just goes down to collect the body. Some last trash talk. You know, what's my wife's name now? How old am I? This going to hurt my legacy? Come on, boy. Just treating him like a little boy. <laughs> That's so a, he, just a little kid. Yeah. So he picks them up, slings them over, carries them over to the grave. AJ's just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's like, what you sorry for? Come on. What you sorry for? Don't bury me. So he tells him, go on like a man, man. Oh, you're sorry now. You know, that was a hell of a fight. You think I'm going to bury you? <laughs> oh, come here, man. And he gives him a hug. He's being nice. He's like, you know, a lot of people ain't giving me a fight like that. You're good. You're good, brother. Then Undertaker turns. He's ready to walk away. Then he turns back, hits a big boot on AJ. Boom. Knocks him down into the grave. Then the Undertaker gets on the tractor, lowers the dirt, burying AJ and winning the match. His music starts to play. He pulls some moss off of the tombstone, revealing AJ Styles' name. And then he goes, picks up his bandana, Gets on his Harley, raises a fist as the pyro goes <laughs> off. Lasers a fist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the flames go off. Pose. His laser beams make his logo. Yeah, that fist of power. <laughs> He's just yes. <laughs> yeah, and then he rides off into the night as Metallica plays, and we get the closing shot of AJ's hand <laughs> just reaching <laughs> up from reaching the dirt. Up. I was I was really hoping the hand would kind of like close into a fist you know like yeah. that kind of thing or, or put up the put up the two sweet <laughs> yeah or just two sweets it uh <laughs> but either way this was fantastic amazing home run slam dunk touchdown uh a plus with extra credit yeah uh Let's... you know they got that extra percent for writing their name at the top of the <laughs> <laughs> of the test this was this was yeah. fantastic this uh, was perfect a you lot know, of fun we were... Yeah, everything. Everything was fun. Lots of little st- the trash talk, the spots, the bumps. It was more than we expected. Not everything having wanted. commentary. I don't know if that oh, I, yeah. I don't know if that was even an option, but you know, certainly not having Michael Cole and JBL call the match. Uh yeah. <laughs> that would have made it terrible. This is Yeah, this is the best Undertaker's looked in years. Mm-hmm. Five, six years. Yeah, they had it. They probably uh, had eight hours to film it. That's probably why. Uh, pretty much. But a lot of inspiration if, from that Matt Hardy from Matt Hardy also it's uh, yeah, no doubt that tweet. Matt Hardy's influence over this uh, unique style of match is unquestionable, I think, at this point. Yeah, I saw him tweet something out after he's like, well, my, my Twitter's blowing up and thank you, everyone. And he's like, I'm happy that uh, this kind of wrestling can be done in this day and age and stuff like that and whatever. I'm happy that this yeah, kind of like, storytelling can happen. Uh, you know, AJ, AJ Styles, certainly AJ Styles did not take a loss on this either. No, he looked great. Although he, he literally tough. was buried with his hand sticking up. <laughs> uh, he yeah, not, so it was not far only from a burial. He, yeah, not only did he look great, uh, everything around this was so good that these both, both, both of these guys come out on top. Yeah, they knew whoever put this all together. They knew exactly what they were doing. It could have been hokey. It could have been bad, but it was perfect. So they leaned into it. Yeah, they really yeah. lean into it, Mike. The real question always stands around this time: Is Mike when when does Undertaker either stop or start saying no to that Saudi money? Um, <laughs> well, he literally uh, ra- he literally rode off into the sunset. As yeah. a fifty-five-year-old man, Mike, do we see Taker come back in like for in Saudi? Uh, uh, does he have anything else to do? When does this man actually stop? Well, I think that they'll definitely probably do another one of these feature films at some point. Was Maybe next starring year, starring him. Him against whatever his next opponent is. Cool, cool. Because uh, this went so well, I think the feedback has been always very positive, and um, maybe even like this, maybe even like this match has revitalized the Undertaker character to keep doing this. I mean, I feel like he could do this for another five years. Yeah, he could yeah, do exactly. these they pre-filmed got... matches uh, for yeah for another decade. Yeah, so we'll see, but I think that. We will see another of those type of match. Who knows? That's great. I hope we do. It was I hope good. we do it was, also. Uh, yeah, excellent way to close WrestleMania. Excuse me, night one. Night one which ended right 
right at 10 o'clock. It was dot. perfect. It was like, I, 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 I had enough time smooth. to watch st- a stand up comedy special and go to bed before midnight. It was amazing. Yeah, it was a it was a nice solid three hours. Most matches, pretty much every match was pretty like, you know, the Corbin Elias no one cares about. But every other match delivered. I can and three I, matches, ooh, I think, over delivered. I can get used to this. Uh, this too big for two night. Too, wait, too big for <laughs> one night. Oh, shit, I fucked it up. I messed it up. I could get used to this too big for one night because that was night one of WrestleMania. Yes. Very, yeah, that, that Boneyard match will be remembered for years and years and years to come. It really will be. It really will be. Uh, and, Mike, that was, uh, since we're about halfway through the WrestleMania, we're probably halfway through the show. Should we take a break? Let's take a break. Let's take a break. We're going to be about right back because we have some trivia and, of course, night two of WrestleMania. So stick around. <laughs> Folks, we're back with the second half of the show. Thanks for sticking around. Too big for one half. Too big for one half. It is Wrestle uh, Mania. Should we just do WrestleMania now? Because we're in the zone. Um, we could. What do you think? And then, what do you think, Mike? And we'll play yeah. trivia afterwards. You know, we're in the yeah. Why not? We're in the zone because this the uh, it's too hot to handle or something. Was it too hot for one? Too hot to handle. Too cold to hold, brother. <laughs> yeah, something. Uh, but, for one night because it is part two of Wrestle uh, Mania. It probably had a pre-show. Oh, I know course. it had a pre-show, Mike. You were tuning in, and you know. I can't gloss over it because Liv Morgan is on WrestleMania and she's taking on Natalia. Uh, they have a uh, yeah, it was okay, good little back and forth, five minute match. Liv reverses a move from Natty, gets a pin, three count, boom. Liv Morgan's a winner. Uh, she's on a roll. You know, she beat Lana, she beat Natty. Who's next? <laughs> Look out, Becky! <laughs> Look out, Becky! We're coming to the top. <laughs> But that was your pre-show. They had lots of other shit, of course, but mm. we don't care. We're going on to the main show. Uh, Stephanie McMahon welcomes us again, and we get the exact same video from the first I was night. expecting a different one, too. Yeah, I was also yeah, expecting I was a... I, I, so, I watched something. it. I watched it, waiting for something to be different, yeah. and then kind of halfway through, I'm like, oh, nope. it's not going to be different. Yeah. No bonus features, no nothing. Yeah, it's weird. Whatever. Like, I'm not disappointed. I just thought. They did so, yeah. they did yeah. so well with it the night before. I was like, oh, shit, maybe they have another one in store, but they didn't. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, let's well. kick it off. Uh, we're starting off with the women again. We got Rhea Ripley defending that NXT women's title against Charlotte Flair. Uh, your queen. Uh, <laughs> this was good match. Good match. Ripley. Rhea Ripley's voice has never seemed so shrill. Before. Yeah, she I was... thought she was like kind of <laughs> tougher. But in the match, she's like, Charlotte, uh, like... Charlotte. What's happening? Yeah. Charlotte, you the think ref, you're all the, that, Charlotte? <laughs> like, Jesus, the ref sorry. made me laugh, too. The ref like, let's go, Charlotte. Come on, Charlotte. He kept calling her Charlotte. Charlotte. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he kept but, hearing Rhea Ripley say it. He's but, like, ah. Yeah, yeah, Ripley, yeah Brit- Ripley, though, she was just screeching, too, in pain. Just like, ah! I can't even do her. Yeah, I, thought, just, I, I just thought, yeah. I thought she, I, I don't know. I just, yeah, I don't think did, I've ever heard her little, before. Yeah, that was a little yeah, weird. It did seem, it did seem a little, uh, yeah, weak than, weaker than she normally comes across, but, uh. She had Dragon Ball Z Saiyan armor inspired gear on that blue and white and gold. Yeah, it kind of looked like a Vegeta thing. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that was pretty cool. uh, Yeah, normally she's all black, so Uh, maybe that's what uh, fucked her up, though. Um, You know, Charlotte, she spends the whole match working over Ripley's knee. Some some vicious chop blocks in there you can see on the replays. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rhea's fighting back. She hits a Riptide. Charlotte kicks out at two. And then Charlotte hits a spear, but Ripley kicks out at two. So we're we're going we're back and forth here, but uh, Charlotte she locks in that figure eight on the damaged leg, and Rhea Ripley is taps out. So Charlotte is your new two time NXT Women's Champion. Two time, too sweet. All hail <laughs> the queen. Yes, Charlotte queen. Flair gets the uh, win. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I don't know what's next for Rhea Ripley. Is she gonna get a main roster call up? Is she gonna? It's tough. Go well, after this? I mean, so we're we're kind of zero for two on these NXT women coming up to the main roster and winning. <laughs> we're kind of uh, both, you know, Rhea and Shayna Baszler lost in their in their yeah, debuts, yeah. which of course you know isn't the biggest deal in the world. Uh, this was a fantastic match. I mean, this match was twice as long as that Shayna match. 
Uh, this was, uh, yeah, I think this was the longest woman's, like this ended up being longer than that five-way elimination match. This, uh, and, and which is perfect for the rematch because, uh, you know, this was, a, this was a great opponent for Charlotte Flair, someone who's kind of gone through both the Raw and the SmackDown Women's Division over the period of time. So maybe, you know, there's an immensely talent, or sorry, there's an immensely talented uh, NXT women's roster. Let's have Charlotte Flair yeah. fuck with them, some of them for a while. Io Shirai. Candice oh, yeah. LeRae, uh, Tegan Knox. I don't even need to say more. Like, we don't know. Well, whoever wins this ladder match Chauncey is going to be Blackheart, her next have, opponent. Exactly. Well, like, that's that's exactly yeah. it, right? There's such a huge talent so of wealth we, uh, down there. Maybe yeah. this is what NXT needs to really push themselves over AEW, especially in the next coming months in terms of you know winning those rating wars. They may be kind of pointless, but in the eyes of the fans, maybe it means something. Yeah. No, I mean... Uh... Yeah, this will be fun. You know, Charlotte, she's got that built-in feud. Whoever wins that ladder match, there's your first title defense. So we'll see. That's going to be fun. This be fun. was great. And just Charlotte Stone, uh, just Charlotte just being, you know, just being a star. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. My <laughs> yeah, queen. Got, I popped. I popped. You got what you wanted. I popped. You know, I would have been fine with Ripley winning here. No, well I wanted her. Point. No, remember I wanted her to win, but then leave the belt in the middle or in the ring because she's like, I'm <laughs> yeah. better than NXT. Well, that would have been uh, that would that would have been not a good look for NXT. Well, yeah, I, I, you know, but I'm just saying, that's <laughs> yeah, I know that would have been the perfect but, match for me. <laughs> yeah, and uh, much like the first night, uh, they put in the big filler match as the second match on the card. Mm-hmm. So we got Aleister Black taking on Bobby Lashley. Uh, the feud with no story or build at all, but uh, Lon is there. <laughs> uh, Rusev nowhere to be found for months now. Um, he got cucked. He got cucked out of existence. Cucked and chucked is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Lashley Black. Uh, they go back and forth for a bit. Lashley's in control. He's ready to hit the Dominator, but Lana just jumps on the apron and says, "No, spear him, spear him." So. Lashley puts Black down, goes for a spear, but then he eats a black mask. Alistair wins. So Lana has cucked her husband out of a win. Yeah, this was just like a typical TV match. Yeah. Really? really need, Didn't they're really just like, happen. all right, we need Alistair. Yeah. I guess it's they wanted le- black. We're leading show. towards the divorce angle now. I guess, you know, Bobby Lashley has a WrestleMania loss because yeah. of this, because uh, of his loudmouth. Uh, did I say that? Yeah, wife. Um <laughs> Loudmouth is good. There's nothing wrong with that. But sure, I mean, um, Alistair Black gets a win in his first singles match at a at a WrestleMania. So yeah, why, so why not? It's all just a notch on his belt. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, let's go to Dolph Ziggler taking on Otis. That the hot love story, hottest love story in the business. Mandy, right now. the that, Mandy on a pole. The Mandy on a pole. The hacker has been revealed. Uh, Ziggler and Sonya are working together. So now Sonya Deville's coming up to the ring with Ziggler. Uh, but Otis, not even Tucker wasn't there for Otis. He was on his own. Um, but whatever. They're fighting. Ziggler's in control of the first part of the match. But then Otis, he starts hulking up. You know, he's getting punched in the belly. He's thrusting. He's getting... <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's ready to hit that caterpillar when Sonya jumps up on the apron to distract the ref. And then Dolph kicks Otis in the balls. But then Mandy Rose comes down. She slaps Sonya, starts beating her around, and then she slides in the ring and just low blows Ziggler while the ref's busy with Sonya. So Otis Otis follows up with the Caterpillar, gets the three count. And then after the match, he's celebrating in the ring. Mandy comes in. They're celebrating together. He picks her up, and we get the big kiss we've all been waiting for. Uh, Been waiting months for this. Been waiting months for this. Too bad, yeah. just too bad. You know, there wasn't the crowd. The crowd would have loved it. Crowd would huge... crowd would have loved it. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure all the fans at home were as stoked as I was for the yeah. We we're for all this still happy soap with opera this. finale that we needed. Yeah, what a, in love. What a better payoff this was than what's in the cage, eh? Oh yeah, we, yeah. Uh, it's so nice that something got <laughs> like that. We saw something through. But I'm still happy we got to see that spider, if that's the only time <laughs> we ever not. saw it. <laughs> I'm not. I'd rather they have... You'd rather have nothing? I would rather they had, like, instead of us showing us the spider and then next week have Drew McIntyre slam the stairs on the cage, I would rather he have just slammed stairs on the cage and then... Then we never know? Yeah, I would have glad we oh, never know. I would have hated that. That's not... <laughs> I need to know. One of the biggest wrestling know. questions of all time. What was in the cage? Yeah. Well, doesn't matter. We got the smooch we wanted here. 
they're in love. They're a couple. Yeah, a f- just a fun, a f- just a fun story from start to finish. Really, yeah. uh, he walks off in the sunset with her in her arms as uh, that song plays. Uh, Love lift me up when we go. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't catch that. <laughs> he's, no, it doesn't actually. Oh, just, in my <laughs> I was head. like, wow, how'd they get the, the right, way I'm booking right it. To that? <laughs> and of course, this <laughs> will set up the inevitable mixed tag match between them. Uh, oh, yeah. Like we said, Z- sucks that they kind of broke up Fire and Desire, uh, you know, for this purpose, maybe. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe it had to be done, but, you know. For them to break up a tag but, team over like a you know a man's feud seems a little yeah. seems a little problematic to me, but that's okay. But yeah, Otis and Mandy they can become the new power couple and yeah, uh, why not? I actually thought Sonya looked good besides Ziggler when they were coming out. They looked uh, like they could be a good yeah because they were both they both had that like black leather kind of thing going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hair up, square up. They both wear their hairs. And that's a good point. And, and they both fight. <laughs> <laughs> they both fight. <laughs> Well, yeah, Dolph Ziggler, his amateur wrestling background. And, but uh, let's go on here. Uh, Mojo Rally comes running in, chased by that group. I don't even know who these people are. It wasn't are. the even... gaggle. It was, it, <laughs> it was just like it the was, local jobber yeah, gaggle. it was a gaggle, but not the <laughs> it was gaggle. gaggle. <laughs> no. Kurt Hawkins uh, wasn't there. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so they're all brawling. They're near the balcony, and then Gronk's up there, so he says, fuck it. He takes off his shades, and then he hits a coffin drop <laughs> off the perch onto the group below, and then he pins Mojo to win the 24-7 title and runs off. Breaking all of the physical distancing uh, guidelines in the process. <laughs> well, uh, they were all screened and tested before this bump. That's what I've heard. Apparently, uh, their tests over there at the PC have been pretty uh, thorough, they've been saying. Yeah. Apparently, if you have a fever of over 100.3, sorry, not allowed. So, uh, Isn't that the uh, hot-blooded... No, I think that's uh, 103, feed. not oh, yes. 100.3. 100. I guess th- that's right. Apparently, that's those 2.7 degrees are enough that it's bad, I guess. Who, who would have known? That's no, Fahrenheit. Known a quick... Oh, that's Fahrenheit yeah. we're talking about. No. Yeah, Celsius, you're dead. You're dead if you're. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Your temperature raised two and a half degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah. Yikes. But speaking of dying, uh, this next match. Randy Orton versus Edge in a last man standing match. A match that I was very much looking forward to, but uh, a match that I think dragged on a little bit too much here. But o- Oddly long. Yeah, oddly very long. long. So let's just get right into this. Edge comes down. Orton's music hits. He's nowhere to be found. Uh, and then we get an RKO out of nowhere and a very rare sight of Randy Orton in pants. That was the craziest part. <laughs> I you know yeah. I saw he, I saw a man come from you know sort of under the ring a man in black given RKO and I'm like oh yeah. that's just that's another one of these druids these druids for hire <laughs> yeah the OC and found that, him uh, Randy Orton found him because there's no way I don't think Randy Orton owns pants no but uh, or we shirts find out. either <laughs> he only owns yeah. little trunks and uh, sweater vests sweatshirt vests yeah, with the that's his off. whole closet <laughs> his whole closet <laughs> and but um, and boots yeah we get a replay though the camera shows that Randy was actually dressed as a cameraman so he had the sweater and pants on uh, during Edge's entrance and then yeah he just put down the camera RKO uh, so then the match starts Edge gets up Randy hits a second RKO this could be over already Nope, this was long from over. Edge lives to fight, and this thing uh, goes on. They leave the ring. They go backstage over into the gym area. So then they start. Uh, oh, yeah, Randy Orton uh, at one point wraps Edge's throat in some gym equipment, which I got a little bit of backlash online with Ben Wall. Now, I heard about that, that, but that seems super inside yeah. baseball. Though. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really get offended by it or anything like that. I didn't. But, um, I didn't know anything about it, which makes me feel like it's one of those, you know, a very small group. Yeah, of I think people. it's more coincidental than anything. Yeah, you know, I think a very small group of people were thought that wasn't cool, but probably just yeah. the normal person watching. They had I this mean, cool spot right around here where Edge was on. Oh, sorry. Um, Randy Orton was on like a roll, uh, like a rolly chair. 
And then yeah. Ed jumps up to the chin-up bar and kind of like swings himself back and forth yeah. and then swings himself <laughs> into uh, a little dive on Randy Orton. I thought that was I thought that was a cool move. I always like it when um the looks the looks on anybody's face. Anytime they're like they they they're setting up chair or setting up table, setting up a ladder. They have that look of like, what if I do this and then this? Yeah. Like they're very expressive. Yeah. And Edge <laughs> yeah, was like, doing looks that. Looks up, looks back. It's so he's dramatic. Like, oh. He's looking up at the chin up bar <laughs> and then looks back at Randy Orton. Looks back yeah. up at the chin up bar. Looks back at Randy Orton. Then he's like, if I <laughs> swing off that, you can see, you can just see the like the gears turning in his head. He's like, oh okay. And it was a fun little. Yeah. Spot. It was a fun little spot in there. Yeah. No, they did lots. He did. Uh, like Randy Orton picks up a weight plate at one point. He's ready to kill Edge. Edge does more swinging, kicks that into him. Uh, and then they fight. They out of the gym area. They go into, back into through some hallways into a boardroom. There's this big long table with some chain link fence on the roof for some reason. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was yeah. a. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember. So like yeah. <laughs> Orton's laid out on the table and Edge just climbs up this little fence like a monkey and drops down with an elbow. So. Yeah, if dude, if, the, if this is how WWE keeps their warehouse, there is not a single warehouse in the world that is as haphazardly stored <laughs> as the things at the Performance Center. Just ladders open, <laughs> yeah, open ladders just... standing there, uh, crates still on forklifts elevated in the air, like violating <laughs> how many codes, I'm sure. Uh, what a crazy place to work that would be. Yeah, well, that gets us to our next set piece, the warehouse area, <laughs> where, uh, yeah, Edge gets Orton set up on some tables, and then he climbs up the top of this scaffold thing, and he hits a big elbow drop off the thing through the tables. Uh, they could have ended the match here if they wanted, but Orton gets up before the 10. Yeah. We got more. Oh, yeah, so, don't, uh, don't forget, a staple for every warehouse is... A uh, a Ford F one fifty with the <laughs> with the pickup down, uh, yeah. not up, <laughs> not up, <laughs> yeah. down. So uh, uh, yeah, so that's um, yeah. They survive the table bump. We continue. They make their way over to the top of a semi truck parked next to that Ford F one fifty. So they 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 eventually they fight their way to the top of this truck. Orton goes for the running punt. Edge avoids. Gets a spear. Hits him. Uh, and then they both get up. Orton hits an RKO, so they're both down again. And then Orton climbs down, grabs some chairs, brings the chairs up to the top of the truck. He sets up for the concerto, but Edge gets up and he just chokes out Orton, lays him down on top of the chairs. The ref starts counting, but then F's just Edge just says, "Don't you fucking count!" He was pissed. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Grabs, there, there was a beep. There was a yeah, bleep. They, they, they should have let that. They should have let that one go. It's yeah. tough times, people. Let it's us, let us hear it's... an f bomb. Come on, yeah. Come on, people. But uh, so he grabs the other chair. He picks it up and cranks Randy Orton in the skull. And then that gets the ten count. Edge has won. Um, yeah, the match though went way too long. It was like thirty-seven minutes. It wasn't awful. It went was a still little long. Fine, last but... ten minutes. Last ten minutes were great, and it start. It started off well, ended very well. And Mike, I mean, even you, uh, dis- you you didn't even mention the uh, offices that they were in, the big board meeting room, and the fact that they made it back into the ring at one point. Yeah, uh, see, there, was there, there was kind of like two <laughs> very distinct scenes of this match that even you... there was like a backstage area where they were like between the ring and the ramp at one point. Yeah. You could see all the wires plugged in. Yeah, you could see everything playing all the yeah. drape, all the drapery, the drapery. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean they worked hard. The spots were fun. It was just a little too long for my taste, but and, I'm and still fun. yeah, there's another. They, the guys weren't really talking that much either, so we didn't have that kind of yeah, thing to pay attention yeah, to. Not as much. How how would this? I think I think the only way this would have really played out live is that just the finish would have happened in the ring, right? Yeah, or, I think or they re- adjacent to the ring. Yeah, I'm sure like half of these things would have happened and half of them wouldn't. Like the whole gym spot wouldn't have been at the regular WrestleMania, um, but yeah, they still probably would have done the big table bump and all that. But I don't know, whatever. It was still good. Edge won, and uh, you know his his first match. In front of a real crowd, will still have that big return. Yeah, box, that's so we'll that's see. still going to be a big moment, and uh, everything's just looking up for Edge, right? Who knows what's next for him? Yeah. So there you go. He's fine. He survived. Mm-hmm. But let's go on to the Raw Tag Team Championship: the Street Profits defending against the uh, the Hodgepodge team of Austin Theory and Angel Garza, represented by Zelina Vega, of course. Uh, 
So twenty, yeah, twenty-two year old Austin Theory is on WrestleMania fighting for a belt. Look at that. Look at look at that kid go. Yeah, and of course Vega's there causing trouble during the match. Uh, Ford hits his big flip over the top rope, and this time people catch him on the way down. So good for him. Uh, and then yeah, all these guys except for Dawkins, they're high flyers. We're, they're doing moon salts, all this shit. Uh, Austin Theory though, he hits Dawkins with a TKO, but then Ford comes flying in off the top rope with a frog splash. And Street Profits get the pin to retain. But after the match, the heels start beating on Street Profits, including Zelina Vega, who's dishing out super kicks. But then the EST, Bianca Belair, comes down to help her husband Ford. She smacks Vega around, hits the KOD. So uh, I predicted Bianca Belair would be on Mania, just not how I thought she would. Who knew this is how we would see her? You know, she's been noticeably absent from the NXT roster lately, especially with the ladder match coming up. Yeah. So it was only a matter of time for her call up, and it looks like she's on the Raw brand. On the uh, Raw brand, man, you know, managing something to do with the Street Profits, which I mean, they're over, she's over. It sort of seems like a good combination. Yeah, as long as uh, right? she can still do her own thing, I'll be fine. Of course, right? You know? I mean, it's a new challenge. Yeah. It's a new challenger for Becky Lynch. Don't, also. don't make her. Yeah, she's no Lana. You know, she's no Lana. Of, co- of course not. And I think <laughs> w- I think WWE knows that too. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Becky Lynch never won the NXT title before getting called up, so big things can happen for Bianca Belair. Big things. Uh, can't wait. Can't wait for that to keep going on. Yeah. It was a fun, fun debut. Mm-hmm. Fun debut. Um, and then another debut. Titus O'Neil is our new host because Gronk had to leave with the 24-7 <laughs> the 24/7 title. For the 24-7 title. Yeah, you can't be out there anymore. <laughs> so, but then we get the Fatal 5-Way Elimination Match for the SmackDown Women's title. Bailey taking on Lacey Evans, Sasha Banks, Naomi, and Tamina. Uh, Tamina looks strong early on, but then all the women decide to team up against her. So Sasha hits a 619, Bailey hits an elbow off the top, Sasha hits a frog splash, Lacey hits a moonsault, Naomi hits her split legged moonsault, and then all four of them just jump on to pin Tamina. So, yes, we got rid of her early. <laughs> but uh, and then, of course, yeah, so we're down to four. Bailey and Sasha team up against Lacey and Naomi. Uh, I don't know. At one point, Naomi, you know how Cody Rhodes does the disaster kick move, mm-hmm. where he like jumps off the middle rope. At one point, Naomi does that. And Michael Cole almost says that he's like, "Oh, a di- he almost said disaster kick," but that's Cody's move. So he's like, "Oh, a spin kick from Naomi." Oh, okay. So, he couldn't call it. Couldn't call it the disaster yeah. kick. Interesting. Yeah, he had to, he had to correct himself there. Oh, no. <laughs> but it was funny. But uh, anyways, Sasha ends up hitting the backstabber into the bank statement on Naomi, so she taps out. So we're down to Sasha, Bailey, Lacey. So uh, the boss hug, they're teaming up. Sasha's holding Lacey in the corner. Bailey comes running at her, but Lacey moves, and Bailey ends up nailing Sasha. So Sasha's yelling at Bailey, saying, like, you know, after all we've been through, you do this? Bailey's trying to explain, but then Lacey comes running in. Bailey shoves Sasha out of the way. Uh, Lacey goes for the woman's right and ends up clocking Sasha anyways. So she pins her. Um, So we're down to Lacey and uh, Bailey. Lacey ends up hitting that beautiful moonsault for two count, and then she goes to pick her up, but then Sasha comes running back in, hits the backstabber, and Bailey follows up with her headlock driver and pins Lacey to retain the title. So Sasha and Bailey are still friends, but it won't it won't last. That was a cooler finisher. When does when has she been doing that? Uh, not uh, just a little. Yeah, bit just recently. a little bit. Yeah, it looks better than her dumb little whatever the hell she had before. The Bailey to Bailey. That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely better than that. Uh, so let's hope. Uh, but yeah, Lacey, so close, so close. So close. You know, th- I, I actually really enjoyed this. It was a little bit messy early on. I don't think I really kind of got into it until it was down to those last Once three. We, yeah, we knew Tamina and Naomi didn't really have much of a chance. Um, but yeah, Lacey, Lacey's working well as a baby face. She's gotten pretty good in the ring. She's, and, she's clean. Uh, and, for Sasha, and for Sasha Banks, I think this is one of those uh, friends close, enemies closer type situations, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. That's, we're leading to that, uh, you know, maybe SummerSlam or something if they can. Yeah, however. That's a, that's a feud you want to climax in a crowd if you can. Yep, exactly. No, that's, but, a, that's a good point. And it's, uh, this was Bailey's first kind of good title defense. <laughs> it, it, it even, yeah, it even she, felt I mean, like. Yeah. yeah, she's on. Apparently she's had like she's the lo- the longest now or reigning, yeah. SmackDown Women's Champion. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, the reign, like you said, hasn't been that memorable. The matches. This was great, but yeah, we'll see. Whatever. Eventually, Sasha and her are gonna have that thing. Oh yeah. Eventually. I mean, who knows? That could be uh, that could be next year's Mania for all we know. 
Yeah, they could. But let's go on to the next spectacle. Or the well, we didn't really know what we were gonna get. Uh, but after the first night's boneyard match, I think we were all even more excited for this Firefly Funhouse just to see what it was. Uh, so of course, John Cena is gonna take on Bray Wyatt, and it starts out like a normal match. Cena's coming out. His entrance, he's at the ring, uh, he's talking to the camera, uh, he's playing it up. And then Bray appears, and we're in the funhouse, and he, he just walks through this door that says, you know, abandon all hope, who enter. And Well, much to the uh, chagrin of, of course, everybody everybody was there, Abby the Witch, uh, Ramblin' Rabbit. Yeah, uh, yeah, all the characters. Uh, Mercy the Buzzard, all these f- fun characters that we've come to learn, come, come to know yeah. over the last six months, seven months. And I like that, uh, that like five, you know, when Cena comes out at the beginning, you're like, what's going on? Is this going to be a regular match? But then, nope, they swerve. He teleports Cena into the funhouse. Well, something was a little weird, too, because, like, he, he starts saying, welcome to WrestleMania, and then it cuts to other people saying, welcome to WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was cool. Uh, I like that. And then next, yeah, you know, the then next thing you know, we're in the Firefly Funhouse, you know, Ramblin' Ragged's urging, uh, do not step through the door, do not step into Bray Wyatt's darkness. Yeah, like, hey, man. Uh, but <laughs> Cena's like, yeah, all the puppets are talking to him. So yeah. pretty, good. Goes through the... pretty good. That uh, pretty good Ramblin' Rabbit. <laughs> it was a little bit higher because he's very like, hey, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Almost uh, but, yeah, Cena, he, he goes through the door. Uh, but the first person he runs into is the Vince McMahon puppet. And he, he gives him that famous ruthless aggression speech. Um, and then we cut to Bray in the ring, and he mimics Kurt Angle's. Original challenge to John Cena, and as they're doing it, like the old footage is used over top. It's so well done. I loved it. Um, yeah, they're recreating it, and then um, yeah, John Cena comes out. He's got his original prototype gear on, and he gets in the <laughs> ring, and you know everything's following the script. And he does the ruthless aggression, and he goes for the smack, but Wyatt knows it's coming. And he ducks it, and uh, I love yeah, they even keeps... had the SmackDown fist back there. You the know, SmackDown from the, uh, fist, the old, yeah, the the everything. Old SmackDown fist. Uh, yeah, so then Cena can't hit him, and then we get our next segment as they, the old Saturday Night's main event theme starts playing with the Funhouse characters' images like spliced in with Hogan and guys in between. It was, mm-hmm. I loved it. I love that old theme. John Cena um, just doing bicep curls yeah, so nonstop. To, uh, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Muscles Bray Wyatt's there. He does his little Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan inspired promo behind the blue steel cage, and then he brings out his partner, Johnny Large Meat, he calls him. <laughs> And then, yeah, Cena's all hyped up. He's doing his 80 promos, and he can't stop pumping the iron. He's so hyped up. He's just going faster and faster. And this inspirational music plays. Abby's mouth opens wide. She's She can't believe how fast he's pumping. <laughs> he's pumping but, uh, so hard. Yeah, but it was all for, it was all part of the Fiend's plan because he tires out Cena. He can't even swing a punch. His arms are spaghetti. <laughs> um, but then we toss Cena into his next transformation. We're in the, the Dr. Thugonomics era of John Cena and he comes out he's got his old entrance gear he's doing the rapper stuff he yeah as he cuts a promo on Bray he can't stop himself from rhyming every sentence like he used to and then Bray does his thing he's uh yeah you know John I've earned you you're the golden goose you're not a hero you're a bully you take the weaknesses of others turn them into jokes uh poor lonely John Cena and then Cena tries to punch him but Bray teleports and he ends up clocking Cena with his own chain and then, uh, then we get the classic Bray in his Hawaiian shirt, the Cajun cult leader in the rocking chair, how he debuted. Mm-hmm. And then he talks about the WrestleMania 30 match, and he's going to rewrite it. So now they're both back in the ring, and they're in their Mania 30 gear. They're recreating spots from the match, and then Bray hands him a chair, and he wants him to fix the wrong choice he made six years ago. So Sw- Cena swings the chair at him, but then Bray disappears. And we get the Monday Night Nitro intro. And I don't know if you noticed, but the TNT logo is right there, still on. I did notice Re- that. Yeah. That, that somehow <laughs> so, made it That made it past the... Uh, that made it to WrestleMania. TNT is on logo. WrestleMania, folks. Yeah. That was uh, very interesting. So, But we're Monday Night Nitro. Bray Wyatt's in the ring. He's acting like Eric Bischoff. And then we bring out Hollywood, John Cena, and his NWO gear. And then we cut to Puppet McMahon and Mercy on commentary, and McMahon says, such good shit! <laughs> that, was huge. that was huge! Yeah, that was a huge that live was pop a for that at Huge pop, <laughs> yeah, huge pop. Yeah. So Hollywood Cena's out here, uh, but the NWO John, he attacks Wyatt, he starts beating him up, he's pounding his face in, uh, and then eventually Wyatt 
turns into Huskus, who's seen as just beating on poor Huskus. And the fiend finally shows up behind John Cena. He locks in the man. Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> right the bit, there the we go. Me. The mandible sneeze. The mandible <laughs> sneeze. Bless you, Mike. That's what happened. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but yes, the fiend, he does show up. He locks in the mandible claw on Cena, hits his sister Abigail, and then he locks in the claw again. Cena's fading away, and then Funhouse Bray shows up to make the three count. The fiend has won, and he stands up and poses as Cena just disappears. And, uh,. We cut back to host Titus, who's just open mouth shocked. I don't know what I just saw. And uh, it was fantastic. That was great. It was a great performance as well. That's what it's like. Uh, that's what it's like for the Firefly Funhouse uh, match. Yeah. I mean, Bray Wyatt's been telling us, you know, this the whole time. You let the fiend. You, the fiend just wants to be let in. But here's the thing: you're not supposed to let the fiend in because he takes you over, <laughs> just like he took over Bray Wyatt. You know, the fiend had, you know, got into Bray Wyatt's head, someone who was vulnerable, someone who needed a change in his life, and he got it right. And yeah. old John Cena, I hate to say it, but I think you let the fiend in. I think you let him in too much. So yeah, what's what's John Cena gonna look like the next time we see him? Uh, that maybe. who the hell knows? Again, it's like, yeah, how do you how do you come back? How do you come back from this, right? Especially, uh, uh, much. You you know, how do you come over this when we know, John, you are the most overvalued, the most overhyped, the most overprivileged superstar in WWE <laughs> history. Hey, man, he said it himself. Bray Wyatt just yeah. let him know that yeah. uh, you know this whole time he's just been talking about himself. Yeah, this was a great, great piece of art. A lot of fun. Much yeah. like the Boneyard match. A lot of fun, just like the Boneyard match. A plus, 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 plus. Uh, yeah. Six stars. Uh, Home run, touchdown, and, slam dunk. Emmy. <laughs> and uh, uh yeah. yeah hopefully yeah hopefully we see more of this <clears throat> um apparently i was i was just looking up into it this was all all bray this was all bray wyatt it and bruce pritchard bray. apparently um they filmed it in like uh like in like in a kind of like 12 hours john cena had a little bit of suggestions uh yeah. but apparently yeah this was just straight bray wyatt um being this character which is so fun to see Yes, perfect. When you let him do his thing. This perfect. Yeah. Oh, man. It's like I already forget about him losing to Goldberg at Super Showdown. Like that <laughs> almost doesn't matter anymore because it's like, oh, OK, because yeah. without that, there wouldn't have been this. And Goldberg's out of the picture. And yeah, you know, Strowman and Wyatt have a lot of history. Uh -huh. So that can be an interim thing you know, who, for Roman exactly. Returns. Exactly. Who the who the uh, who the hell knows? But that wasn't even our main event. How is this not the main no. event? Well, uh, I, uh, I don't know. We had a w Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar always has to main event. He is. If Roman Reigns he is can't Brock be Lesnar. here. That's has to be Lesnar. Point. That's a good point. Yeah. So he's here. He's defending his WWE World Title against the Royal Rumble winner, Drew McIntyre. He's fighting for his life. He's worked so hard to get here. Uh, Brock Lesnar, though, he, he tries to come out strong right off the bat, but then Drew hits a quick claymore, but Brock kicks out it too. He goes for another one. Lesnar avoids him. He starts hitting some German suplexes, and then he hits an F5, but Drew kicks out at one, and Brock is shocked. Brock does his shocked eyes here, and Heyman doesn't know what to do. As his, as his face is all red, he's yeah, just, sweaty. Yeah, already, even though it's only been like 40 seconds. 45 seconds, <laughs> and Brock, Brock Lesnar is out of breath. He's out of it. But uh, So he picks him up. He hits another F5, but Drew kicks out at two. So Brock hits a third F5, another two count. So Lesnar goes for a fourth F5, but Drew gets down. He hits another Claymore, but that's not enough. He hits a third Claymore, and he tells him, get up. And then he hits a fourth Claymore, and he pins Brock Lesnar to win his first WWE World Championship. Big, so. big moment. He celebrated passionately, of course, as the show went off oh, the yes. air. Uh, you know, and he did exactly what you have to do. If you get Lesnar frustrated, you know, he loses focus, his opponents take advantage, and hey, I think Drew McIntyre just had the advantage by having long, dark, greasy hair. Brock Lesnar mm -hmm. does not do well against opponents with long, dark, greasy hair. I mean, hell, we saw him lose to Seth. We know he lost <laughs> to Roman, and now Drew again. I think, um, Brock Lesnar's success remains in the Baldies. 
In beating Maybe Kurt so. Angle. <laughs> in beating Goldberg. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he doesn't do well. well. Uh, he doesn't do well with these. But this was this was a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's only going to be five minutes. It's what else? What else? Uh, exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, no, that's, that's all. Uh, exactly. Yeah, both. I think both world title matches combined were like five minutes. Uh, but well done, Drew. <laughs> Two combined for less than ten. I bet that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. But um, yes, well done, Drew. You earned it. Match was yeah short and sweet. Didn't need to go long, anyways. But uh, Drew celebrates. No big pyro. No balloons. No confetti. But he's the champ. He's the champ, you know, and bringing bringing Monday Night Raw into this in, into the into the next couple months. Uh, yeah. Certainly. Well, and they uh, they announced that Money in the Bank. This whole announced. time they were still pumping happening. Money in the Bank. Uh, is it like May tenth? May tenth. So, yeah, so the arena in Baltimore, where it was supposed to take place, said no, that's not taking place. So, <laughs> well, I don't. What I've heard lately is that it's just going to happen at the PC. Like the arena that it was yeah. like they in Baltimore, they said no Money in the Bank, no thank you. Where yeah. it was supposed to I mean, be, if so they, uh, <clears throat> they've canceled, so it could just be another PC. But again, hell yeah, it's Money in the Bank. Yeah, if their plan is to yeah just keep going forward with pay per views and just doing the Money in the Bank, so yeah, three hour show that'll be fine if they want to do it, do it. Of course, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, we all we all we always love Money in the Bank. Is it always the ne- the immediate next pay per view after WrestleMania? Uh, it's moved around. It's been in mm-hmm. June. It's been in July. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's usually it's usually that late spring, early summer. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah, re- really, really looking forward to that one. Also, yeah. But let's continue right on because the raw after. Oh wait, no, we're gonna do trivia first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you know, we we can we can sit yeah. on the nice little we just had WrestleMania bubble. If yeah. you had a favorite match, something you didn't like, you know, this is where Mike, you can just speak your mind. No, I, I think it's been spoken for the most part. You know, the Boneyard match, the Firefly Funhouse match, they both over-delivered, were very, very well done. And, yeah, the latter match was great. The Owens-Rollins, mm-hmm. uh, both world title changes were fine. They were good. A lot of a lot, yeah, a lot the of women's fantastic matches were good. Yeah, pretty much. A lot of great highlights. Yeah, most of the wrestling, you know, of course the crowd would have added to everything, but most of the actual wrestling and stuff was well done. It was, yeah. No, I can totally agree. Glad, uh, glad we got Mania through, and hopefully it can be two nights next year because that was so easily digestible. It was quite, <laughs> yes, quite easy to do. It was, uh, but we'll see. I don't know. Everything's up in the air because the whole weekend falls in line with the Hall of Fame, the Takeover, the SmackDown, and all this other shit. Right. They got to do the Hall of Fame. Can't they do the Hall of Fame as like a halfway point? You know, do that one in like. No, I don't know October. I don't know. Have it Everyone line up with piggyback. have it line up with Survivor Series or something. I don't know. Everyone wants to piggyback off WrestleMania. Yeah, even those piggyback creepy Hall of Fame people. You know, WrestleMania is the shark, and the, all these other things are those fish that just, just hang le- around, just them. leeching on, right? Yeah, just leeching. <laughs> but yeah, but let's, another great another great WrestleMania, and can't wait for it to be live next year. Hopefully, yeah. I have no, hopefully we have no idea. So next year, yeah, next year I think it's supposed to be in Hollywood. Hollywood. So that's, even, that's the perfect place for more of these boneyard film type matches. Yep, it's Hollywood. The perfect like, you know, place whatever. for The Rock to come back. Yeah, and then I think I heard that uh, they're going to try to do the WrestleMania after that back in Tampa Bay again because they uh, got screwed out of. This oh, one. that would be nice. I mean, I certainly also yeah. think like that'd be fair. Yeah, especially things like uh, you know. I, 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 however much revenue just having WrestleMania probably brings into wherever you are, right? To, 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 to lose that revenue after thinking you're going to have it is probably pretty significant. Yeah. And whatever, yeah, I don't know if you saw, I think Kevin Owens tweeted out some picture of what the original stadium and like the pirate ship that was up there and shit. Oh, really? And that's, he was like, he's like, this is what I originally planned to have involved with the match, but had to uh, go to the jumping off the sign instead. Right, right, so. right. How much <laughs> How much do you think into like constructing the WrestleMania set did you think they got? Do you think they even started? Or was it uh, far enough away? Or what do you think? I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm sure they were pretty, like, they probably had it all designed out and everything. And But the actual construction, I'm not sure. Right, right, right. Oh, interesting. Uh, who knows? Maybe they'll just save it all for two years from now. Hmm. 
Who knows? Yeah. Like, I'm sure. They, I don't know. Do bring you, back you know. the pirate theme. Well, I mean, if they're having it there, I bet because yeah. it's, you know, I bet there is pirate adjacent things because the team that plays there are pirates. So I bet it's all yeah. kind of tied in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what that looks like. We'll see. But. Okay, Mike, let's keep moving on with the show because WrestleMania is done. Since we two-parted that, uh, of course, we can't go a week without having some trivia. Trivia. Woo! Trivia. Trivia, even though sometimes we do. Yeah, but we always swap it with something else. Anyways. We always fill it. We give you something fun. Uh, Mike, I have four questions for you this week. I have... Four. Fantastic. Why don't you or five. why don't you <laughs> We'll see. Okay. Okay. How about how about you <laughs> how about you kick it off either way? Okay. Either way. Um it's WrestleMania time, but I'm not giving you WrestleMania trivia. Cool. I'm giving you a little bit of everything. Cause we've got some more miscellaneous trivia this week. Oh <laughs> perfect. I love some miscellaneous trivia. Yeah, so get ready. Okay. You'll be tested on all fronts, maybe. Perfect. Let's l- let's start. Let's hear them. Yeah, hopefully this is a simple one to start with. Hopefully, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, what is the name of the company that fucks shit up in the Terminator? Uh, Skynet. That is correct. Skynet. And yes. also in Terminator 2 and 3. Well, haven't yes. seen, I, was just the f- I didn't see the new one or the one with Christian Bale, so I don't know if they are the bad guys in those two particular films. Yeah. No, I, uh, I I mostly keep it just to the first two. Did you did you watch Terminator Two recently, and that's uh, it was just on your mind? No, it was just you know just something miscellaneous yeah. that I figured you'd know. No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. But I said it's the easy. That's the warm up. I love Don't that. Worry. I love that movie, Mike. Okay, so um, uh, the the first two questions uh, have no hints. It's just flat out question, and I think you, Mike, are smart enough in your wrestling knowledge that I think you know it's framed appropriately. Okay. Okay. Uh, these are all going to be WrestleMania themed. Of course, we had this uh, Last Man Standing match, Randy Orton and Edge, uh, with a total runtime, Mike, thirty six minutes and thirty five seconds, which is a little, little bonkers. It's a super long match, but it's actually not even the longest match in WrestleMania history. Mike, my question for you is: What is the longest match in WrestleMania history? Well, by default, it would have to be the Iron Man match with Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart, WrestleMania 12 World Championship. Ding, 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 Mike, of course. <laughs> there you have it. Yeah, my WrestleMania 12. Which, uh, yeah, it went- Shawn Michaels wins. They go 0-0 after the 60 minutes, and they have a sun death overtime where Shawn Michaels gets the win in 1 minute and 56 seconds into that overtime, making a total runtime of 67 minutes. In 56 yes. seconds. And it's a good match. It is a good match. I love Sean. It is a uh, it is a good match. This match that uh, just happened, though, for, for the fans at home, this was uh, 36 minutes and 35 seconds. It was actually, what, uh, 11 seconds longer than what is now, I guess, the third longest match, was, which was uh, at WrestleMania 16. It was a uh, title match between Triple H, The Rock, Big Show, and Mick Foley. Well, there you go. Yeah, it felt long, and it was the second. <laughs> felt last long, so they... and it was okay, Mike. What do you got for me? All right, sports, sports, some sports related trivia. Perfect. Here we go. Who is the only man in the history of this planet Earth to win both a Super Bowl and a World Series? I feel like that's one of those questions that I should that people should know. Yeah, I'm sure you know this name. Yeah, who was uh, uh who It is a fun it? fun. I mean, other people have played multi sports, but this man is a champion in two sports, Super Bowl and a World okay, Series. Okay, well, I'm going to say it's either didn't Bo It's got it's going to be either Bo Jackson or Deion Sanders, right? It's got to be one of the two. I th- I mean, unless there's like one of these like wild cards where it's like, you know, they were a third string offensive lineman and like uh, a pinch hitter. <laughs> you know, something like that. Um, I'm going to guess it's one of those two guys. I'm going to say Deion Sanders. It is Deion Sanders Ooh. is the correct answer. Yes, there you go. 
That's pretty cool, man. eh? What a what a, what a trivia fact, though. I eh? had the only man to what? And he played. He wasn't. You know, he actually yeah. He wasn't almost. a bench warmer on uh, maybe on yeah. either. I don't think. I think he was a. Yeah. He at least played. He yeah. was a contributing yeah. player playing serious minutes in two professional leagues, which is insane. Crazy, crazy. All right, what do you got? Uh, okay, Mike, you know, we were just talking about that Iron Man match at uh, WrestleMania 12. Of course, that was the main event of WrestleMania 12. So not only is it the longest match ever at WrestleMania, but it's the uh, longest main event at WrestleMania. So, Mike, my question for you is, what is the shortest ever main event in WrestleMania history? Uh, well, that might be this year's with Drew versus Brock Lesnar. I'll say that. Uh, it was that, but uh, do you want to give a fun what you think the other one might have been? <laughs> uh, wait, so so I am correct is what you're saying? You, yeah, you you are you are correct. You are uh, you are correct. Um, is there some sort of technicality here that I'm supposed to? No, no, no. This 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 was the this was the shortest <laughs> main event of all time. I was just yeah. thinking if if you knew of one besides this one. Like if that was pretty short. That was also uh, fairly short. This is just for the kids at home. Yeah, uh, nothing that was like super short. I think I remember Hogan Andre wasn't that long. It was under ten minutes for how iconic it is. I think it was only like seven or eight minutes or something. But I don't know. Yeah, nothing. No uh, super nothing, short. Nothing. Like nothing came long. to mind. They're uh, not. I mean, maybe they're not. Uh, take you back to WrestleMania nine. Right, so Yokozuna beats Bret Hart. Oh yeah, Hogan in eight Hogan, minutes Yoko. fifty-five seconds. Then of course Hulk Hogan comes out for some reason that I'm still not entirely sure about, uh, and yeah. he beats Yokozuna in twenty-two seconds. Yeah, that thing was making yeah, that was uh, making that officially the shortest match ever. Um, yeah, you know, kind of, you know, whatever. But I guess yeah, this, yeah. What just no, what, that's yeah, I forgot. What just happened right, last yeah. night is actually uh, the shortest uh, main event. Weird. Yeah. All right. All right. Here we go. Over to the world of film. <laughs> My question for you. Um, so this one, I'm sure, yeah, you'll 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 understand what the so there's. Anyways, Quentin Tarantino, you know the man. Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to name all nine of his directed feature films. You know how they build them, like his most recent They're always like, the yeah, ninth film. the ninth film by Quentin yeah. Tarantino. Like he's written, he's done other things, but I want you to name those nine films that he's, you know. Of course, okay. So, um, okay, let me try to go in order here. So we got Reservoir Dogs, Pulp yeah. Fiction, yeah, Jackie Brown, yeah. Kill Bill Volume 1, Kill Bill Volume yeah. 2. So those two are counting as one together. Oh, they count as one. Okay, 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 yeah. okay. But there, but that's yeah, yeah. That's how that's how they do it. Right. So I'm going by their rules. Right. Okay. Rules. So, uh, so that's four. Yeah. Kill Bill Volume Two. Um, yeah. So okay. Yeah. Reservoir Dogs. Pulp Fiction. Uh, Jackie Brown. Kill Bills. Yeah. Uh, then we have Bastards and Glorious Bastards. Yes. Django Unchained. Yes. Uh, Hateful Eight. Yes. Once upon a time, yeah, and I'm missing one, and it's going yeah. to be okay. Dust till dawn was Robert Rodriguez, not that. Uh, but he wrote it. He, I think. Wrote, he wrote it, and he dawn. was yeah, he so yeah he starred in it. He yeah. Was, so there's there's a couple of things like there's that, a couple of things yeah, like that, that where it's like he wrote the what's that movie True Romance. True romance. He wrote it, and then but that, which is also uh, one of Brad Pitt's better movies, I think. Uh, yeah. Long hair, stone, also... sitting on the couch. Uh, <laughs> one of Brad Pitt's better performances. There was also the um, one of the grind houses. Uh, yeah. It was, I think it was, it was the one with Kurt Russell, death, uh, de uh, not death race, uh, death something. Uh, You're very close. Yeah, I'm. Uh, fuck, and I think I think that's the one. Uh, it is the death, one. Uh, maybe it's not death. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, fuck! It's like I can hear it. it's two words, all yeah, kind of pertaining I, to the car, <laughs> and like it's in there. Speed it's in your and noggin. like it's fat death car death. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, fuck! Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, it's like two one syllable words. Ugh. Death. Death. Death race. No, I keep saying that. Death drive. Death. Car. Death evidence. 
That's a clue. Death evidence? Death proof. <laughs> there you there go. it is. There it is. And that's the ninth. <laughs> That's the ninth. Oh, that took, that took uh, a little yeah. bit. That took so, me a little bit. Yeah, he also was... has a. He also directed a segment in the Clue movie. I don't know if you remember that. And yeah, also a segment in Sin City. Yes, the film. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. there's a couple, but uh, those nine are the ones where he directed and wrote, and uh, his yeah, some of them he even produced. But directing and writing is the main That's thing. Fun. But there you go. Each one better than the last. Well, depending on. You, so you're saying Jackie Brown's better than Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs? Each one better than the last. <laughs> okay. okay, Mike, I got question. I got okay. question three for you here. Uh, you're gonna get some hints for this one, so uh, okay. you're gonna be good. Uh, of course, we were talking about we were just talking about the longest things in WrestleMania and some of the shortest things in WrestleMania. You know, Mike, sometimes it takes a long time for you to get somewhere, and sometimes it doesn't take much time at all. Sometimes it takes no time for you to get for you where you want to be. So, Mike, my question is, who is the youngest person? To main event WrestleMania. I have four clues for you. Okay. Clue number one. This happened at WrestleMania 15. Uh, mm -hmm. Clue number two. This person was 26 years old. Mm -hmm. It was a no disqualification match. And your fourth and final hint. There was a special guest referee named Mick Foley. Uh, I will say The Rock. Dwayne The Rock Johnson's the right answer. 26, eh? Really? Isn't that fucked? 26. 26. Uh, I thought, yeah, I would have thought maybe Lesnar at WrestleMania 19 was. Um, I no, he wasn't. No, sh oh, fuck. I, I, had, I had the list. He wasn't. No, I had the list up. I got to find this. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, 26. Okay. Crazy. No. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> uh, all right. So I guess I got one more for you here. Sounds great. This one uh, is a personal preference of mine. We're going in the field of music. Uh, yeah, whether you like this artist or not, you definitely know some of their songs. So I would like for you to name seven Taylor Swift songs. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Oh God, I gotta write this. I gotta. I gotta write these down. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna write these down. Just or just like ticking them off. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh okay, shake it off. Oh yeah, this one. That is um, and then you got uh, uh, sixteen. No, fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, you're going old on that. One. Uh, I yeah, I think that. I think that's where I got to start in this. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 if you want to go chronological, I, I got I to gotta start early on in Taylor Swift because that was uh, that fir fearless was. I bought my high school girlfriend that CD. Wow! So I gotta, wow. I gotta, I gotta See. pull back from uh, going to Future Shop to buy that CD. Wow, that just yeah. aged a lot. That's a name drop. That just aged that's a, a name lot. Drop. What just happened here? Future Shop. No, that's a good album. Fearless. High School. Yeah. Um, okay, so I had fifteen and Shake It Off. Let's do. Yeah. Uh, and then there was um, what's the uh, what's the you wear short shorts, I wear T-shirts. Or something like that. No, <laughs> that's uh, that's off the Fearless album. Uh, is that a, is that you belong to me? Yeah, change one word. You you belong to. You belong. You belong with me. Okay, yeah, you, you belong, belong with, with me. Things. That's yeah. three. So, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, is that the she wears short shorts, I wear t-shirts. That's the short shirt. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. I just want to make sure that's the right song. Um, yeah. Okay. So I think so. That's a couple songs of Fearless. Uh, was there a song called, uh, um, I don't want to say, it may be like Kelly Clarkson or something, but Teardrops on My Guitar? That is Teardrop, yeah, yeah, that's one. You're the that's, reason uh, for that's the four. Teardrops yeah. on My Guitar. I think that was her first breakout single. Oh, oh that was it, eh? Perfect. Because yeah, we're at four... Um, we may be off all I know for Fearless. Uh, there was also the, uh, I Know You Were Trouble When You Walked In. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, that's five. I have four more I need to get. Uh, okay, but she has to have a ballad or a slow one. Well, she's got a lot. I know. Of, I, I just. I, but she has to have one that's like <laughs> that's not standing well, out to me. Teardrops is pretty slow. Yeah, maybe maybe that's what I was but, thinking about in the slow one. I mean, she does have other. Uh, of course, yeah, of course. She um, she's done many genres at this point. Fuck, there was a song with Kendrick Lamar. 
that may have yeah, had a yeah. may have had a color in the title. <laughs> Uh, yeah, bad blood, bad blood. There it is, six, yeah, six. <laughs> Only three more. Um, let's make it ten. Fuck, <laughs> four, four. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing well. Well, you're doing so doing well. Okay. Doing okay, okay, I got six. Uh, I'll give you a hint. You've, um, well, I mean, think of album names. Some songs might. Think of album names. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you. Uh, yeah, yeah. You said a. You said a. Is there a song called Fearless? There it is. There it is. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Okay. So there you go. So give me three more, and I'll give it. Then you'll have the perfect ten. Three more, then I'll have the Sean Spears. Um, okay. Oh, fuck. I really don't. I really, I'm really having a tough time, and I know there has to be. There's at least four that I know. That you know, as soon yeah. as I, I just uh, hear the like the riff or the intro, like. <laughs> this isn't a, this isn't a humdingers again. This isn't a humdingers again, is it? Yeah. Um. Middle of the night, my dream. <laughs> just, gonna, just gonna turn it to uh, you singing the song. I'm just trying. Mike, I think I have to uh, bow out at. I think I have to bow out at seven. Something about a breakup, you know, and um, not wanting to rekindle. It's not ringing a bell. We are never oh, ever shit. getting back yeah, together. Yeah, you're, right. you're right. We're never getting yeah. back together. Uh, yeah. God. You know, there's uh, uh, Blank Space was a big hit. Blank Space. You know. And uh, what's, what's, g- give me a tenth. More. Give me a tenth. Uh, well, the, the, the new album, uh, You Need to Calm Down, that was on there. You Need to Calm yeah. Down. I don't know that one, no. Oh, I got, what about I got me my... with Brandon Uri. Yeah, I was, I was, I remember, I was like, I know there's a track with Brandon Uri. I couldn't remember what it yeah. was. There's many more. I could go on. You did, you did better. Seven was the original number I wanted. I, yeah, well, you at least got six with no help. Oh, that was fun. That was yeah. Fun. No, you did good. Good, good, good. That was more for my personal. <laughs> yeah. Well, last last time I think you did the uh, the Daft Punk albums. So uh, yeah, I knew I maybe I knew it was yeah. coming. Yeah. I knew it was coming. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. okay, Mike. Well, speaking of I, I, you, you know, you know what the next que- you know what the next question, Mike, is going to be. Um, who is the oldest person to main event WrestleMania not named the Undertaker? Yes, 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 Mike. <laughs> I know, but the Undertaker <laughs> is the winner by far. If you include this year, he's fifty five this year, uh, yeah. which is he 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 would win that award by far. So I guess my question, Mike, is. Uh, who is number two on the list? I'm going to give you four hints. Okay. okay? Uh, hint number one, they lost the match. Number two, uh, in doing so, they lost the title. Uh, hint number three, they lost to a wrestler who is a multiple-time Mania main eventer. And your fourth and final clue, it happened at WrestleMania 32. I'm going to say Triple H. Old Hunter, a lot older than you think. He was 46 um, yeah. when he did that. Uh, a little shout, little shout out to Batista too, who's actually third on the list. Who was 45 when he main evented Mania with Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton. Uh, little shout out to him. So yeah, and, so Undertaker's the winner by like eight years. It's not even close, uh, and he's probably <laughs> yeah. this is probably not his last main event. <laughs> at Might not be. Yeah. Uh. I mean, uh, Ric Flair should have been up there. He should have made it, invented WrestleMania 24 against Shawn Michaels when his retirement match, but that didn't go on last. So. Oh, so they replayed that match on last week's SmackDown. You know, we we yeah. didn't talk about it. Yeah, we didn't talk about I it. I saw but, this really yeah. funny uh, tweet from just somebody talk like nobody, just somebody talking about SmackDown, and it just read like this: "This Ric Flair guy is pretty good." <laughs> you know, it's just like, <laughs> who's this Ric Flair kid? He's pretty good. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen that match before? I had seen that match before. And, yeah. Uh, it's a good. Yeah. So that one, that should have main evented, but it didn't. So Ric Flair, sorry. Unless you want one more. Who knows? No. Fine. <laughs> I know. He can be a next year's Boneyard we match. We all know. Yeah. We all know yeah. that uh, that, main, that main event's not happening. No. But that was no. your trivia for the week. Yes. But we're not quite done. We have. You know, the well, many times it's one of the biggest, most fun Raws of the year. The Raw after WrestleMania. The- Let's get raw. Let's get raw. Crap.
crowd's rowdy. They're singing. They're chanting. Uh, there's your United Kingdom flags everywhere and stuff like that. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> UK flags just flying around the uh, the uh, the locals. Yeah, but it's not to be. We're still at the Performance Center, but it's the Raw after WrestleMania. So let's and they they just jump right into some wrestling. Uh, you know, you thought you might open the show with a new champ or something, but nope. Oscar's out first. She's taking on Liv Morgan. Uh, who, and yeah, you know, Oscar's just taunting, laughing at Liv, even though Morgan won at Mania and Oscar didn't. But uh, she doesn't win here. She gets in some moves, but Oscar takes her out uh, with the Oscar lock against the. Win. I guess step one of Oscar being singles lady. Yeah, if she wants Kyrie to be all the, if she wants to be, to be all the single ladies, uh, she got to beat all the single ladies, and I think Liv Morgan's just kind of yeah. that first step. Speaking of Taylor Swift, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Beyonce, single ladies, greatest video of all time. <laughs> Not in my. What's really funny? Somebody made that joke last night. Like this is the second time uh, that I've heard somebody make a uh, Kanye West <laughs> interrupting uh, Taylor Swift joke, and it's always it's well. always funny. Yeah, it's always topical. It's always topical, but, isn't it? Yeah. But at least Liv Morgan's getting TV time, so I'm happy. Of course, here, of course. She taps yeah. out. Uh, but another guy who's getting lots of TV time. Austin Theory's still here with Angel Garza. They're getting a rematch against Street Profits for those tag titles. So, uh, yeah, you know, similar, pretty much what we just saw, but they're working hard here. Uh, yeah, the corner Dawkins. Forge gets the hot tag. He's all hyped up. Even with no crowd, he stays hyped. He's grabbing the camera and shaking it around. Uh, but then he goes up. He climbs up the rope. Vega grabs him. Garza runs up, kicks him. But the referee sees Vega catch, uh, grabbing him. She catches him in the act. So he just calls for the bell. He ain't having that shit. So Vega gets in the ring and super kicks forward again while Theory and Garza are holding him. So Bianca Belair comes out again. She slams Vega. Street Profits clear the ring. Uh, Belair grabs the mic and just cuts a promo on Zelina Vega. Like, girl, uh-uh. I go here now. You know, the EST of NXT is the EST of WWE. So she's the strongest, toughest, roughest, quickest, greatest, best, fastest. You can't outrun me. So get in the ring, girl. Let's do this. And we're going to get it. We get Bel Air's debut Raw match. She's taking on Zelina Vega. So I'm hyped. I'm happy. Uh, and I'm also happy that Vega's wrestling because we don't get to see her often. Yeah, but she can go. She's throwing out super kicks. And, uh, you know. Yeah. She's, you know, she's small. She can do her karatas and shit. Uh, so this is fun. Street Profits on the outside. Still, get, Ford's getting even more hyped. Everything his wife does, he's going nuts. Uh, yeah, Zelina Vega hits a crossbody off the top rope, but Bianca just catches her, hoists her up, lifts her over her head, and just does some like presses before dropping her. <laughs> That's strength. Um, and then Austin Theory gets in the ring. So the Street Profits attack him. They all start fighting. So the ref, he says, this ref isn't having anything. He throws this match out as well. He's, he's not taking this any shit This ref's tonight. really not taking any shit. There's a certain level of shit that you should be taking as Yeah, you, an gotta, you gotta be a little lenient It's a on the little shit. shit. So they, everyone clears the ring again. Street Profits and Bianca. And then Ford cuts another promo. He's like, my bro's here. My wife's here. Let's do this. So we get three on three. So Street Profits and Bianca against Garza, Theory, Vega. Um, you know, Theory and Ford are going at it. Bianca tags in. She gets a hold of Vega. Belair beats her up for a while. She even hits a handspring to knock Theory off the apron. Hits a moonsault. Uh, and then Garza breaks up the pin, though. So Ford chases him off for touching his wife. And everyone starts fighting. And then back in the ring, Bel Air hits her KOD to get the win. So she's looking good. Yeah, I feel like this... Well, it was weird. This could have been accomplished way quicker. I mean, they kind of made... They didn't need all this because, shit because, in between. Because, like, <laughs> the, the, mania, the mania results automatically set up the six-man tag, yet there was, yeah. like, two matches before it for some reason, uh, which I guess, you know, they're filling up time, whatever. Bianca Belair looks great. Uh, challenger for Becky Lynch, which which would be great. We can they could have they could have they could have Becky Lynch Bianca Belair tomorrow if they really wanted they to. Could, or they can but, just keep building you know, her up until that is her, uh, a new peak. Yeah, I think Belair. Yeah, she's she can be a champion sooner than later. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know. You're right. But uh, and then Bobby Lashley gets interviewed backstage about his loss to Alistair Black, and he tells Charlie something. You know, something tells me I need new management. Or a new wife. And then uh, Lana walks up. She didn't hear this. She's like, hey, guys, what are we talking about? And last, she's just like, nothing. And he walks off. Oh, so now Charlie so, so now, so now, uh, Bobby Lashley's going to cuck Lana with <laughs> Charlie Caruso? With Charlie? Is that what's going to happen? 
Charlie Caruso? Yeah. That'd be fun. Is that who was interviewing him? <laughs> Backstage Charlie? Is that who it was? Yeah. yeah I thought so. Yeah. Uh, and then we go back in the ring. Alistair Black's taking on Apollo Crews. And uh, Crews, he actually, he lasts way longer than any of the jobbers here. He got lots of moves in. He lasted like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but uh, eventually, Apollo, he jumps off the top rope. Black catches him with a big knee and then gets a black mask soon after that for the win. But uh, Apollo looked good here. You know, we don't get to see him too much. We, but, uh, uh, yeah, we ne- we never get to see him. You know, it's a, it is a telltale sign, though, that currently we are maybe understaffed uh, within yeah, with, within the company. You know, yeah, we need uh, we need a body. We need people. We need beef. We, we need some beef in the room. Let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, but let's go on. We got Ricochet and Cedric Alexander taking on Danny Birch. Oh, yeah. And well, the Tweet sorry, of the Week champion. Sorry, one more thing I did have to say that I thought was really funny. Yes. At one point today, uh, what was it, Tom Phillips? It's not Michael. It's Tom Phillips, right? Who does Raw? Uh, I believe it so. It was, yeah. yeah. At one point, Tom Phillips says, uh, welcome to Raw, um, Apollo Crews, to which I said to myself, huh. I uh, didn't, what was didn't this? know that. Yeah, he was drafted to SmackDown. Um, huh. During the last draft, uh, I I didn't know he wasn't on Raw. So there we go. Our second, I yeah. think, official um, unex- <laughs> unexplained wild card transfer. <laughs> well, you know, I think uh, the Raw after Mania is when they start doing exactly exactly switches I, I'm and not, drafts. I'm not, so. say, I'm not saying it's wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying it no, happened. No, no. It happened. Yeah, maybe this is just their way of doing it. They're just like, okay, well, no, yeah, I don't mm-hmm. know. That was, yeah. Anyways, uh, the new hodgepodge team, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander, taking on Danny Birch and Tweet of the Week champion, One Lorcan. Mm-hmm. Who I didn't expect that going in. But, uh, yeah. And uh, Ricochet shaved his beard. I don't like Looks it. like a little boy. A little too, yeah, a little too uh, smooth with the bald head and everything. <laughs> a little yeah. too smooth. Yeah, when somebody's yeah. bald up top <laughs> and on the face. I mean, maybe it's for that aerodynamic. Yeah, he's doing so many flips. Shoom, he's gonna... <laughs> yeah, he just needs to be. <laughs> but because uh, maybe he wants to go for a triple flip. Maybe, yeah, um, and, he, and he can't do that with a beard. It's too much. Uh... Yeah, the the nine ten, the nine ten. <laughs> oh whatever. wow, whatever that would Jesus Christ. That'd be nuts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, no, this uh, you know Ricochet Cedric, they look good. They get the win after they hit a bunch of moves in a row. Uh, and then Ricochet does the recoil. Yeah, one of those old, one of those old simple, fun tag matches. Uh, these, you yeah, know, sure. You know, they're not they're Cedric and Ricochet. They got nothing else going, so might as well team up for a bit. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, considering yeah. what well, Ricochet just kind of ate the shit end of the stick for the last month, or at yeah, least since at least that, since that Brock match, he's just been since he went to Saudi getting yeah, shit on. Uh, he was jobbing out to twenty four seven title yeah. guy Riddick Moss. Yeah. Yeah. Was he in that gaggle? Uh, I didn't notice. I mean, <laughs> I don't even, I don't maybe. even think he so. He might have been, but I doubt it. Uh, I think, yeah, Kevin Owens cut a quick pomo in a parking garage. Pomo? I don't know. Promo. <laughs> pomo. Well, yeah, it's better uh, better than being in the parking lot. Better be in the parking garage. Yeah, safer. It's much, safer much safer. And then Seth Rollins takes on Denzel Dejarmet. From NXT, but you could have fooled me. I didn't I know. know. I didn't know that man existed at all. Yeah, maybe he's maybe he's just uh, not TV worthy yet on NXT. But mm-hmm. anyways, uh, Rollins squashes this kid, and hits the curb stomp, gets the win. Poor guy. And then, yeah. Uh, but next, something you've been waiting a long time for, Mike. Why do you say it? That why do you say that? <laughs> I could have just as easily said, Mike, this is something that you've been waiting on. <laughs> you could have, but I got you first because your girl. Uh, your favorite, the big return, the big large return of Nia Jax is here to take on, uh, well, new resident jobber, Deanna Perrazzo. What the hell? I, li- I like know. Deanna Perrazzo. Why I the, like hell, her, why the hell does this keep happening to her? She's, I don't she know. did they don't nothing know. wrong, shows up <laughs> she to was, work yeah, every day. She was day. fine. She was good. She's been doing all right in NXT, but uh, Nia, Nia needs a snack. She needs a, someone to squash. So uh, Nia's back. We didn't, you and I didn't miss her all that much, but... Um, you know, she does still have beef with Becky. We never got a one-on-one match after she broke her face. Mm-hmm. So, but she destroys Perazzo here. Jax uh, hits a new finisher. What actually looked pretty cool. It was like this 
this wing clipper DDT technique. Yeah, it was a little bit. I don't remember what her finisher was before. I think her finisher was just sort of like. I think it was just a Samoan, Samoan drop. Samoan drop, before. and yeah. everyone kept hurting them. Everyone kept getting hurt. <laughs> yeah, she kept dropping people. So they were like, so. okay, Naya, too many people are getting hurt when you drop them. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to have you grab their neck. And <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have you kind of drop them. Okay, now you got to. Now you got. Naya, you got to watch out for this. You don't want their top of their head to hit the mat, Naya. So that's going to be really important for you to grab their neck, but make sure you don't break it. Yeah, put your love handle under their head to break the fall. So cool. I think we have two months until somebody's hurt. Uh, maybe the lack of, you know, weekly television, live events, etc. is just going to lessen the amount of time that Nia Jax has to injure the competition. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this could be we'll good see. for everybody. Uh, you know, Nia Jax but is back, think, but not really. Uh, <laughs> I do think she will be gunning for Becky sooner than later. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a good little uh, kind of in-between kind of. Yeah, as, as we're waiting as for wins. things to unfold towards SummerSlam and things like that. Yeah, have Becky break her face and dominate. Yeah, as long as, as long as Nia Jax doesn't win fucking Money in the Bank again. Didn't she win it last year? Uh, no, Bailey won it last huh, year. Okay. Either way, either way, uh, let's move on. Let's move <laughs> on. Umberto Carrillo is out here taking on Brandon Vink. The Vink. No, that was a name been... that I forgot until he said it, and then I couldn't remember yeah. where I heard it. <laughs> well, he's just been jobbing around recently. <laughs> that's what like, it is. That's, that's what it is. So, yeah, um, been... how many squash matches can you fit in a row? Well, I don't know. Uh, this show might have set the record know. for most amount of consecutive squashes. Yeah, Carrillo gets the quick win with a nice moon salt. There you go. Um, and then, yeah, I think, uh, yeah. So all throughout the night, whenever they would have like a backstage promo, it was actually like from WrestleMania post match, but they j- mm-hmm. just showed it here. Yeah, so, like, I guess Charlotte they, had they a, sort of had. They, yeah, they had. I guess it would just would have just happened. Kept the show moving, which was kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, so Charlotte was there. She had a promo with Charlie and just says, yeah, Ripley was all right, but she bowed down to the queen. So we'll see her on NXT. This might have been her raw farewell. Who knows? For now. For now. For now. Um, and then we get the aftermath of uh, Sunday Night's Mania. After Drew's won the title, he goes back, uh, and then he comes back out again. He's got the belt around his waist. You know, he's the first ever UK-born champion, or WWE champion, uh, Oh, it's so fantastic. He's getting interviewed. That's fantastic. Yeah, or the world champion, yeah. Uh, so Shara Schreiber's there, I think. She's interviewing him in the ring about this huge accomplishment. And Drew shows off his side plates. They're already done. He's got his little M logo thing. Um, and Drew's like, thank you. Thank you to Paul Heyman. Because he heard him during that match calling out, trying to coach Lesnar after he was hitting F5s and saying he can't get back up. But Drew thought about his whole life and getting back up and climbing the mountain inch by inch, hitting claymores, whatever it takes. And he won the title. He did it. Uh, But before he can finish his celebration, the big show comes on down. The big show. We're the big show. (laughs) So here he comes. He's looking big, and he's got a referee with him. What a weasel. (laughs) So big show. He puts him over on the mic. He's like, hey, man, you're good, but you're you're not a giant. So uh, Drew's like, I know where this is going. A big show says, you don't know shit. I'm not challenging you. I'm just saying you're dressed and I'm dressed. So uh, ding, ding, ding. Let's ring the bell, bitch. Let's go. So it looks like he is challenging him. But Drew's like, well, I'm dressed because I just beat Lesnar. I don't know why you are. But uh, he assures him. He says, I'm not fighting right now. So big show says, all that talk. You're just some punk. Uh, and then he ends up slapping him in the face. So Drew takes off his belt, and we are getting a title match. Woo! Uh, mere 20 minutes after Lesnar, but we're, it's taking place on Raw. But it's still WrestleMania, technically, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways, Drew versus Big Show for the WWE title. And it was uh, early on. Big Show's dominating Drew. It was kind of scary. We're like, uh, <laughs> would they actually do? Could they screw Drew here? But then Drew recreates the Hogan-Andre moment. He, skip, he scoop slams Big Show. He picks out him up. Um, but then Big Show hits a choke slam for a big two count. That was another scary mm-hmm. moment. And then Big Show, he's charging up. He's going for the KO punch. He's screaming like a scary giant, you know, chugging. Going, Rawr! He's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Drew ducks the KO punch, hits the Claymore, gets the three count, and his first successful title defense. Imme- immediately after, too. You know what? This this yeah. this didn't even feel weird. Uh, this felt nice. 
What do you do on the Raw after Mania? I don't know. Big Show just wanted to put the guy over. Is there anything wrong with that? Like, it felt good. It still prom- it yeah, still no, promotes I'd... the future of the belt of these guys. Of course, Big Show comes back because everybody has to watch his Netflix show. I just saw that pop up on my thing the this Big morning. Show show? He is uh, he's like he's a, he's a dad, and like it's made for kids. Yeah. Is it is it like a sitcom? <laughs> it, or yeah, what it, is it's it? but, it, but I've seen previews. Yeah, it looks silly. I, I, I clicked uh... on it, and it was uh, it does put itself in the kids TV section. Like I think it's like one of the like it's Family okay. Channel level of. That kind of sick, you know, kid level sitcom, yeah. whatever it is. Maybe I'll watch it with my niece. There you go. I'm sure your niece would love it, and I'm sure <laughs> WWE superstars are going to pop yeah. up. I saw a clip. I saw like Mick Foley in a clip and something else, and other guys like that. Mark Henry. There you go. You can Wilson. get you can get your niece into that show, and so I think Big Show is just back pro- promoing that slash putting somebody over, and uh, you gotta you gotta love it when somebody does that. Yeah, no, this was good. This was fine. We closed out WrestleMania officially with this, uh, but uh, it won't count as a WrestleMania match in the record book. No, no, right? I don't think so. No, no. Or if anything, it would be <laughs> like uh, it, they might, you know, if it's a, you know, it's a, it's a dark match or something. You know, they may yeah. call it, but. But uh, yeah, so what's next? So this was the last of. Uh, well, I mean, they still have this week's NXT has already been taped, but um, apparently, like this Friday SmackDown and stuff is going to be live, or at least. Oh yeah. I don't know. I've heard that. Yeah. So cool. uh, I don't know. The shows are continuing as scheduled for now. Yeah. And I don't I'm not I don't totally know what Florida's current uh, emergency lockdown protocol is. You know, I think they've been a little bit looser and that's how WWE has been able to get away with it. Uh, so who knows? Yeah. All right. I don't know. They can they can build a ring. They can do wherever they need to go. And I guess they, re- they we'll really see. can. Right. They have they have the personnel to do it. Yeah, but we already know this week's NXT is going to be a good one with the the ladder match and the Ciampa versus Gargano, so that's something to look forward to. It's going to be fantastic, and uh, yeah, we have another week of wrestling going. But that was that was our that was Mania. That was Mania, and of course, Raw. That was the big show. Oh my god! Yes, everything everything surrounding it. Um, yeah, that was everything. You know, it went well. It went pretty well, all things considered. Oh, I got to say, it was a uh, it was a slam dunk top corner. Uh, surveys. Yes, I gotta, I gotta say it. Yeah, survey says. Ding. Yeah, ding, there will, ding. there will never be a, there will never be a bigger time that WWE has to make lemonade, and they got through it, and we all kind of got yeah. through it together, and I enjoyed WrestleMania. There, I said it. There, I said it. Yes. I said it. It's yes, it's fair, and it's yeah. It, at the end of the day, it produced some content that will live on longer. That, that will live memories. on longer than our memories will. That's true. And the people who performed yeah. them. That was WrestleMania, though, Mike. And after a big weekend, of course, it only makes sense that we cap off the show the way we always do, which is with the Wrestler of the Week. With the Wrestler of the Week of the Week. Wrestler of the Week of the Week of the Week. The Wrestler of the Week of the Week of the Week. Of the week. A lot, a lot to pull from, Mike. So I'm gonna put you on the block first. Who do you got? All right. Well, I'm just gonna get right into it. A glorious performance, a return to form. The American badass, the Undertaker, knocked it out of the park, looking like the man we all know and love, the legend that he should be. In that boneyard match. So the Undertaker, Mark Calloway, you've got it. The Undertaker, Mark Calloway, wrestler of the week. I think this might be the first time uh, he's he's achieved. He's he's gotten such an yeah, award. Yeah, he's the uh, yeah. He hasn't had a lot to pull from in the time of our show here. So certainly not. Uh, and it's great to see him come back and do something totally unique, totally different. Yep. Which uh, which was great, Mike. I'm also gonna pull from something, someone who came back. Uh, for me, you know, Mike's. I'm a sucker for a. I'm a sucker for a good promo. You know, those few times that we've had Cody address the uh, address the crowd quite candidly, you know, it always sparks emotion with all of us, right? When somebody is able to speak so passionately. And on Friday night, on the Friday before even WrestleMania, I, I, for some reason, I was glued onto every single word that John Cena was saying. Uh, it was one of the better promos, not only I've seen from him, but seen out of WWE, I felt in a long time, um, and just taking that momentum into his Firefly Funhouse match, which was probably the most fun 
I had all weekend. He took a lot of shots at himself, and it ended up being something that nobody will forget. John Cena, you're my wrestler of the week. Yes, fantastic. Yes, those uh, yeah, those two both involved in the two best segments of the mm-hmm. week. Yeah, so. oddly enough, these two kind of pre-filmed things and then were, yeah, best parts of the weekend for me. And then that ladder match was also good. I also surprisingly liked yeah. that uh, SmackDown women's match. So there was a lot of good action. Yeah, no, there was... Lots of good, exactly. Multiple. But uh, Taker and Cena, the two legends, stand tall. Two legends <laughs> standing tall as the wrestlers of the week, of course. That is the show. Remember to rate, remember, rate review, like, and subscribe because we're going to be here as long as wrestling's here. And then if wrestling's not here, I don't know, we got to find out another way to be here because I'm sure we'll try to find another way. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah, there's, there's content to be had and podcasting to be there's done. always podcasting to do so uh until then folks we'll see you next time mike you uh you stay safe out there stay at home and wash your hands yes keep it fresh Shoot.